Hello friends. This is Fanfic Universe. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto had the godly power of the nine paths? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. Leave me alone. A short blonde haired boy with a wildly thrashing tail shouted as he ran away from a mob of civilians carrying weapons screaming for him to give up. He has spiky black hair with blonde streaks in it, and dark blue eyes with a slit in the middle that carry a certain warmth along with the coldness of a shinobi veteran, he wears a black muscle shirt, black anbu pants, and sandals and black fingerless gloves this is Naruto Uzumaki third Jinchuriki of the Kayubi and is another night the villages hunt for him. He had been treated badly since he was little and got beating constantly and went to the Hokage and the elders and practically begged for them to tell him the reason he was hated and to his shock he found out he was the container of the most powerful tailed beast in the world and he was the son of the Yandaimi Hokage and Kashina Uzumaki along with being the grandson of the Shodem and Naidem Hokages. He asked them to train him so he could live up to his family heritage who were all too eager to help him reach his potential unstunted, so the Sandame trained him in the basics like the three basic jutsu, only he couldn't get the clone right thanks to his cage level reserves so he asked the old man about a technique called the Shao DW clones. It was an A ranked Kinjutsu that allowed the user to split his chakra separately and had a memory feedback ability allowing the user to gain the knowledge from a dispelled clone which boosted his studies immensely to where he already had the advanced teaching mastered while he did the physical exercise and found out his body healed itself and got stronger after severely injuring himself or training to the point of exhaustion. He also found out he was immune to the mental backlash of the clone memory training so he used a thousand clones each day to train in chakra control, basic weapons, chakra theory, manipulation and history along with the study of bloodlines and dislike the Sharingan instantly sure it's a good tool but to copy someone else's hard work is disgraceful and disgusting. Sandame also trained Naruto in the monkey fist style that uses agility and strength of a monkey to deliver crippling and fast blows to the enemy which Naruto mastered easily thanks to sparring with his cage bunshins non-stop and taught him the art of bojutsu which he was actually forced to on the defensive from Naruto's natural ability to take a style to a whole new level involving taijutsu into the mix making him unpredictable in battle. In a total of three weeks Naruto mastered all the teachings the Sandame taught him, and was sent to Kaharu and Homura for genjutsu and ninjutsu training which he surprisingly excelled in thanks to his foon tuned chakra control from the constant stream of clones doing chakra control exercises that were made for Uzumakis and Senjus. He also found out he had three other Keke Jenkes one affected his body like his healing, except his bones felt stronger and he could form weapons from them by sprouting them form his body and found out he was a wielder of the dead bone pulse Keke Jenke of the Kagaya clan who were wiped out leaving very few survivors. Luckily Danzo used his root soldiers to acquire the scrolls to all the dances and styles of the deceased clan which he quickly mastered thanks to his large amount of stamina, endurance, and mass shadow clone training making him cage level in their own style from constant sparring against the Sandame. His third one affected his eyes giving him the abilities of the infamous Rinnegan of the Rakuto Senen except his had nine rings instead of six thanks to be the container of Kayubi who has been quiet recently after obtaining his dujutsu. He felt his chakra grow stronger in density, and control along with his mind being sharper and faster reaction time. He also found out the wielder had access to every single element known to man including sub-elements which he immediately learned his main affinities were fire, water, earth, and lightning which was for some reason red he mastered elemental manipulation after six days using thousands of clones shocking them with his inhuman learning rate. He learned jutsu for the main elements from ninjutsu specialist Anbu on orders from the Sandame and root from Danzo who were eager to train him due to the Yandaimi's wishes. He trained relentlessly in every ninja art including demolition and jikukan ninjutsu wac he vowed to surpass his father in. Kenjutsu in Kusarigama, Gumbai, Chikuto, Katana, Bo, Kama, Nunchaku, Tonto, Wakazashi, Ninja 2, All Shuriken Senban Kanai. He also had a stronger version of his mother's chakra chains, which had sharp blades on the ends making it even more deadly and incorporated this ability into his fighting style allowing him to fight multiple enemies better thanks to the constant sparring with clones and sandame. He also found he was a saiyan and had unlocked his first form after he felt anger and exploded with a power that made the biju seem like kittens and trained with his unlocked form day and night to extend the time he can stay in it. 
Naruto also was able to use the separate part of chakra for Ki, physical energy, and Reishi, spiritual energy. His mother's scrolls showed him how to use them and had techniques for them also allowing him to shoot shockwaves from his hands, and throw ki blasts from a distance with enough power to overpower a tailed beast ball. One day Naruto visited the Hyuga clan with the elders so he could see how political meetings go, but got bored quickly and watched two branch and main branch members spar until they noticed his presence and asked him why was he watching. He told them about his dujutsu which had the same abilities as their, but promised not to tell anyone except Hiyashi before going to the clan head about his request to learn their style which Hiyashi became interested in after hearing about his training and decided to teach Naruto the Hyuga style taijutsu which he mastered the basics quickly in one hour shocking the normally stoic clan head. He asked him why he used shadow clones, so Naruto told him why he used him making the Hyuga clan head to cackle in laughter at how a four years old solved the problem the cages couldn't and was going to tease them at the next meeting getting an amused chuckle from Naruto who helped the clan head loosen up and met Hanada and Hanabi who were the same age as him. Hanabi and Hanada were born the same day as Naruto whatever. He found out that Hanada and Hanabi were both opposite where Hanada was shy and meek, Hanabi was blunt and fiery and always clinged to him when he came to visit forcing Hanada to stop being shy and me. A female branch member named Neji always felt contempt around Hanada, but felt safe around Naruto who asked her why she hated Hanada for something that she never wanted, and told her the caged bird seal was something a rookie seal specialist could break. That day he got kisses from those three Hyuga girls who glared at each other with lightning sparking between their eyes only to get a stern talking to about getting to know him better before pursuing him getting nods, knowing he would be in the CRA even though he only calls it a big family. His year starting with Danzo was on tactics, strategy, and emotional training which the war hawk only told him was to be only emotionless in battle and around those who haven't earned your trust and to be kind and caring to those you cherish which Naruto made into his code. Naruto also found out that one of the root Anbu was stationed as his personal medic and was one of his dad's students who was surprised to see him and explained to the elders and Hokage at how Kakashi lied to her about Naruto being dead which made Naruto make a note to beat the shit out of the Inu masked Anbu which she blushed at how protective he was of her. Naruto also asked what happened to Donzo's arm and told him that it was severed in the war along with getting the nerves in his legs damaged making him unable to be a shinobi. Naruto surprised them by not only fixing his leg and giving him a new arm, but used his physical energy to reverse Danzu's age to his prime which nearly exhausted Naruto to unconsciousness and asked the young Saiyan as to why he did this only to get a smile. Because what kind of grandson would I be if I allowed my family to suffer? That statement made the normally emotionless Danzo cry with tears and hug him tightly thanking him by showing more emotion around his teammates which made them smile at how a young boy was able to change people and Serutobi decided to give him the contracts for the Phoenix, Salamander, and Crow from his Genjutsu and Ninjutsu trainer Itachi Uchiha, the Salamander from Danzo and the Phoenix from his mother with all three summon bosses agreeing to the multiple contract signing. Once he reached five years old he was already a prodigy stronger than Itachi Uchiha, and was heading toward the Hokage's mansion for his birthday with the other clans being invited from the Shinobi Council which he was thankful for since he loathed the civilian council for how much grief they caused him and his Gigi only for a mob to chase him into an alley now he knew they hated him for being a Jinchuriki but he's gonna show them he will not tolerate their threats against him anymore. Naruto sensed the mob getting closer except he felt his senseis and surrogate family on the rooftops. Today is the day you die so be a good little demon so we can finish what the Yandaimi started, screeched a pink haired woman who ran at him with a kitchen knife going for his heart not seeing his purple metallic eyes and the hate boiling in them. I have had enough. His voice whispered into the wind making the Hokage and the others who heard him widen their eyes as his hair flashed into a golden blonde with black streaks except it felt stronger. Ah. He screamed as his muscles and veins bulged as his eyes turned a dark poisonous emerald with a black sclera. Ulkiora's eye color. He felt his hate and sorrow flowing out of him causing everything to shake startling everyone at the bright light piercing the skies in a scream. Naruto remembered all the looks, beatings, and insults he got from being the container the feeling at wanting to destroy them and felt something snap in him and tossed his head toward the sky. Gra. He roared as his aura exploded off him and the aura covering him from view causing everyone to cover their eyes from going blind and waited for the light to go down and what they saw would forever haunt Naruto's tormentors. 
Naruto's hair turned frigid standing up with a dark fringe covering one of his eyes which had a cold, emotionless look in his eye that made a crow masked Anbu shiver it while Inu masked Anbu planning on reporting this to the council only to feel someone pull him off the ground and gasp seeing it was Naruto. You are the one who told Rin Chan I was dead. He replied coldly making everyone even the Sandame flinch back as Red Yuki began to cover him turning his eyes to a burning red with a black scalera with a vixen inside him looking at him with wide eyes. He unconsciously channeled my chakra he's just like Yukushi Chan. She muttered before reading his memories and felt rage and sadness at how she ruined his life before promising to make it up to him tonight. Naruto slammed him face first into the ground making them wince even Kayubi at how brutal he was knocked out before turning his eyes toward the mob who suddenly forgot what he did to the Anbu and charged him only for a blood red Nodashi to appear in his hand and spoke in a cold voice echoing in the wind. Scream. Bahihime. He said with no emotion before a blast of reishi ripped through the mob spraying blood everywhere before he reverted to his normal form and suddenly vomited with tears in his eyes and passed out on his back. Danzo appeared next to him in a Junin outfit picking up Naruto with a sad look in his eye before vanishing in a swirl of wind to the hospital his teammates following him with a group of Anbu to watch over him. Mindscape. Naruto opens his eyes that had a haunted look inside them and looked around to see his mindscape only to chuckle hollowly. I'm starting to question if I have any sanity anymore. He cackled with a dead look in his eye before feeling himself pulled into a hug making him stiffen, Benahime Chan. He questioned getting a nod from the one holding him. He turns to see one of the most beautiful women he has ever seen, creamy smooth skin, two blood red fox ears, red smooth hair cascading down to her bubble shaped butt, scarlet red eyes with a black scalera, double E cup mounds and nine flowing red tails behind her with a black kimono hiding her figure this is Benahime Kitsune. Yes Naruto-kun I'm the big bad demon that was controlled by a man posing as Madara and had the eternal Mangekyu. She said sadly only for her to feel a kiss on her lips getting a moan from the tongue licking her lips. I forgive you Benny chan it isn't your fault. He said warmly his eyes now filled with a warm light making her blush and noticed a scroll behind her and noticed her innocent look getting a smack on her rump. I present to you the Kitsune summoning contract, Kashina Chan asked me to give it to you when we first meet, she said as he signed his name in blood before talking about training in her Yuki and many other things till he noticed he was fading away. These years will be great Benny Chan, he murmured before disappearing back to the real world. Outside Mindscape. Naruto snapped his eyes open to dodge a stab from a kanai in the hands of a rat masked Anbu and bisected him at the waist and used a katan jutsu to burn the body just as Danzo and his daughter Saya came in with her looking over me for injuries honestly her crush on him is too obvious. He told them he was fined and about meeting Kayubi along with the summoning contract and her promising to train him in using her demonic chakra which Danzo agreed to since it could make him more powerful even though he can beat all three of the Sanin. Time skip. Five years later age, 10, Naruto sighed as he looked at the beautiful woman beside him violet hair, porcelain skin, yellow snake-like eyes, she has a huge double E cup, standing at 5 feet 8 same as him, and she wears a black battle kimono with black anbu pants underneath and blue shinobi sandals with a purple colored blade at her waist. This is the boss summon of the hubby clan Manda who became quite attached to him after finding out about his status in the CRA but stated she would be the alpha along with Benahime which I agreed to. In the coming years as an apprentice to Danzo Shimura, he learned a lot to make even Madara Uchiha green with envy, he mastered his Saiyan abilities, Ki in Reishi, stronger than the 7SM in Kiri in Kenjutsu, Ninjutsu surpassing old man Hokage, Genjutsu are more deadly than Itachi's to where he only has to glance at someone or point at them to put them in one, his Taijutsu is monstrous thanks to my ability to get stronger from recovering of exhaustion and is a sealing lord a rank higher than a sealmaster in everything. He has mastered Benihime's Yuki all the way up to nine tails after signing the Toad contract where he had to beat the shit out of Bunta for insulting Manda and got the key without that failure of a godfather knowing which he found out didn't care about him and only trained his dad was because of some prophecy and had the elder Toads make him the main summoner since Jiria has neglected his god parenting duties. He also mastered his father's Hiraishin no Jutsu shocking Hirazan before screaming out that he was a Kami Dam genius which embarrassed him to no end. It wasn't that hard it was like a summoning seal all he had to do was go with the pull. Right now he is standing at a height of 5 feet 6, he has a black high collared shirt with the, the Senju crest on the back, black wristbands with storage seals, black anbu pants with red medical tape tied around his shins, black combat boots, 
a red rope belt tied around his waist his nodashi benahime sheathed it behind him while his tail is tied around his waist. This is Naruto Senju Uzumaki Namikaze and right now he is heading to start his first year of the academy to try and make friends, but he told them if they insult him on the first day the gloves coming off. Naruto looked toward Manda who nodded before transforming into a small snake and wrapped around his shoulders nuzzling his cheek before walking to the classroom where the clan heirs were only to hear a bunch of loud noise making him sigh at how loud these people are. When he walked in everything became quiet due to the air around him that screamed danger making some give him wide berth while the males gave him glares trying to intimidate him only to recoil at the look of intent to kill in his dark blue eyes behind his golden streaked hair while some girls crowded around a duck-haired brooder swooned over him. Hey Naruto-kun. Hanada yelled getting a smile from the Saiyan and walks to a sit beside her ignoring the glares sent by the brooder and mutt and talked about all that happened during the years. Naruto told her about his training and his summoning training which shocked the girl at how powerful her Naruto was becoming and wondered if Manda could teach her. A scar-faced man walked in with a silver-haired man that glared at Naruto only to get a cold look making him shiver not knowing he was trained by Danzo and passed out test papers around, but Naruto's had a genjutsu on it that he dispelled and answered all the questions correctly he no longer cared about the council's opinion if they want to do something bring it the on. Iruka was grading his paper and gawked at seeing Naruto score a 100 and announced it out loud getting looks od disbelief, envy, and jealousy till two shrill voices sounded out. Sensei. He cheated there's no way he did better than Sasuke-kun. Everyone had to cover their ears including Naruto who slams his fists on the table and flared his spirit pressure causing to slam into the floor face first. I swear to Ing Kami. If you disgraces of a kunoichi screech like that just to impress that ing faggot I will ing turn you into ing ash. He roared at them his dujutsu activating scaring everyone except Hanada who is looking at him in awe before the pressure is let up and he sits down trying to clam down his temper. Naruto feels two people staring at him looking to his left out foe the corner of his eye to see a white haired woman nodding to the outside while Sasuke is glaring at him with anger at seeing his eyes that reminded him of the Sharingan planning on taking this to his father. Naruto nodded at the white-haired girl while Benahime is telling him that's Kami under an illusion making him wonder what a goddess wants with him. Class went outside for taijutsu sparring which was pathetic with fangirls turning sparring into catfights. The only ones who had potential were Hanada, Shino, Shiamaru, and Yukumo the others are far too arrogant to train seriously. They all think being a shinobi is all about looking good and being famous they wouldn't last one minute on a C rank mission at all. Danzo already promised to take him on as an apprentice along with Saya who is starting to get clingy around him, not that he doesn't mind but he made her promise only when they become genin. Naruto sat down with Hanada who finished her fight against the Haruno and practiced chakra manipulation shaping them into whips, chains, spears, swords, arrows, and bullets something that got everyone's attention. Naruto noticed their stares. What? He said coldly making them frown at him being cold I mean come on they just wanted Sasuke-kun to be the best no questions asked not some clanless orphan that does not deserve such an honor. Naruto stands up instantly with an annoyed look on his face. Do you see this crest on my back? He said even colder making them obey and gasped seeing the symbol of the infamous clan rivals of the Uchiha. That's right I'm the Ing Senju heir so don't think I am a clanless orphan, so don't get so Ing arrogant to think you are better than me. He sneered at Sasuke who glowers at him. What the are you looking at trash? He said coldly seeing the looks of jealousy on the brooder's face. Aruka sees this and stands between Naruto and Sasuke with his fangirls. Get out of the way sensei. If this prick thinks he can act so smug and thinks he's Madara's descendant let him show his claim if he has the skills to back it up and not be a copycat like his jutsu thieving clan. Naruto taunted making the passing shinobi wince at his voice getting colder every second while a group of Uchiha passing by wince in remorse at how far their clan has fallen. Equals equals Hokage Tower equals equals Danzo smirks seeing his grandson take the arrogant students down a peg while cackling inwardly at Naruto shutting them up by calling out his heritage uncaring of the consequences already knowing he can destroy the other villages if he wants to. Kaharu sighs in sadness seeing such hate in his eyes at one of the most prominent clans. I guess it was inevitable that Naruto would harbor hate towards a clan that was responsible for his parents' death in a way, no doubt Fugaku is gonna be pissed at the meeting today since the elders are trying to kill his friend's son Naruto is wanting to have a reason to, to talk to him. Homura said in a bored tone already disliking the council even more especially for trying to turn Naruto into a weapon. 
The door suddenly opened to show Saya who had a look of distaste in her eyes, to Sama. The council has demanded that Naruto be brought to the council room now for having power that should belong to the less Uchiha. She said sarcastically making the snicker at her jab toward the Uchiha's manhood. Danzo sighs before moving toward the council room already knowing one of the Anbu will try and drag Naruto to the council forcefully only to get an ass whipping. Back with Naruto. Naruto gives the Uchiha a cold look not showing any emotion which pissed him off at how he looks like his older brother and spoke. Anbu if you do not go away in the next few seconds back to your dogs of a civilian council this grass is gonna be stained red with your blood. Everyone jumped back from the dark edge in his voice while looking at him with disbelief at how he insulted the council. How dare you insult my mother Yubaka? Sakura screeched only to get an uncaring look from Naruto who snorts before walking toward the bleachers with his friends looking at him worriedly at the emotionless look in his eyes. Naruto sits down before unsheathing Benahime and began cleaning its red blade carefully only to stop noticing the Uchiha's greedy look making him flare his spirit pressure. If you any think of demanding Benahime I will make sure you will not reproduce anymore. He said darkly making him pale before glaring. I will get that sword Dobi. Only a Uchiha can wield it properly. He sneered inwardly only to see both councils approaching and gained a smug grin at seeing his father. Where is Uzumaki? A fat man shouted arrogantly and noticed the village's favorite punching bag before strolling up to him only for a dark voice to freeze everyone. What does the council want? Naruto said coolly while continuing his cleaning of Benahime who is vibrating in pleasure at her container's care of her and worry seeing his body as tense. Makoto sighed knowing some people are going to get memed, and blushed at seeing Naruto's muscled body not seeing his gaze on her. The council would like you to explain why you have the Senju crest on your clothing. Makoto asked politely with the council nodding only to get a piercing look from the ten-year-old boy making them shiver at the cold look in such young eyes. Naruto snorted in annoyance, because the Uzumaki and Senju are cousin clans thanks to the marriage between Mito-sama and Hashirama-sama so that basically makes me heir to both clans end of discussion, said an annoyed Naruto who sheathes his nodashi ignoring the fuming civilians while some of the shinobi frowned at his disrespect of the council. One of the more idiotic ones tried to snatch Benahime away from his belt only to get knocked into the wall causing it to collapse shocking them at his physical strength. I said end of discussion, and do not think I will be on a team with the Banshee and Emo along with that perverted Cyclops just to stunt my growth, he said sending a cold look toward the civilians who look away nervously. Oh and if you try and attack me like you did five years ago, he began in a dark voice making them shiver uncontrollably. I am coming at you with razor blades and lemon juice rotten lemon juice. He glared making them piss themselves only for a red blur to land in front of Naruto with a kabuki outfit. Gaki. That's not a way to treat them. Said Jiriya only to get a sneer. What do you want Toad Sanin? Naruto said in monotone. How did you get the key from Jeritora? He questioned getting a mocking smirk. I had Ibuse and Kuroheim talk to the Toad elders about it allowing Benahime to get her other half back. He said pointing to his stomach getting a hard look from Jiriya who wanted Naruto to rely on its chakra so he could be taken down easily. Regardless you will be getting your abilities sealed away, you are not ready to handle that kind of power. Said a Jonin Kakashi only to get an ominous chuckle from Manda who was on Naruto's shoulder that Jiriya noticed and tried to slice it only for Naruto to kick his knees off from under him and punch him in the face sending him barreling into a bunch of Anbu guards for the civilians. So you are the lech Oro Teme kept ranting about. The snake said in a bored tone making Jiriya growl at seeing the boss summon for the Habi clan. Sanin. Why are you harassing my future apprentice and godson? Danzo said impassively approaching the academy grounds getting a glare from the civilians at the demon being an apprentice to him planning on getting the demon on a team where he can be watched. He won't be bothering me anymore Danzo sensei since he can't teach me anything I don't already know. He said smirking at the Sanin's look of anger at him unlocking his heritage. Uncle Fugaku? Fugaku looked toward Naruto with a raised eyebrow while Sasuke is seething his father isn't demanding that blade from this commoner. Tell Itachi chan I said thank you. Naruto smiled warmly, getting a smirk from Makoto and Fugaku at Naruto already finding about Itachi's real gender planning one teasing her later while Sasuke is livid at his him knowing his brother so casually. This isn't over Naruto. Jiriya said before walking away to plan how to get Naruto back to his normal hyperactive self so he can be easily manipulated just like it was stated in the prophecy not knowing the toads told Naruto about it and told them it wasn't even real. 
Naruto remembered the white-haired looking girl from before and saw her next to an alley so he walked to her as soon as he got close a purple barrier sprouted around them. A mix of a silence, blocking, and chakra masking seal, impressive Kami-sama. He said with approval getting a blush from the disguised goddess who dispelled the illusion showing her bombshell of a body and pale skin. Naruto-kun I'm assuming you know what happened about the attack on your birthday. She asked seriously getting a nod knowing Benahime was being controlled. Naruto, that man wasn't Madara Uchiha, that was one of your father's students Obito Uchiha who wants to capture all the biju to resurrect the jubi. She said gravely getting an incredulous look form Naruto and Benahime in the seal. As that man nuts, the jubi is not so easily controlled she was attacked by greedy humans causing her to become enraged. Benahime shouted hysterically. Kami sensed Benihime's comment and smiled slyly. Naruto-kun how about you become the new jubi instead? She said innocently getting a knowing grin from Benahime. Sure. Besides I've been wanting to release Benny chan from the seal. Okay Naruto-kun, but I have one condition. What is it? I want you to take me as one of your mates? Are you sure Kami-chan? Deadly sure. Naruto-kun. She said before her and Naruto bite each other as a black cloak of Yuki surrounds them as two marks of a black wolf with ten tails appears on their collarbones while Naruto drops to his knees in discomfort at the feeling of his bones and muscles snapping and repairing themselves while he felt his body getting stronger and his hair changing. The feeling stopped before gasping at his features. He now looked more muscular with a more defined build, his whisker marks more defined, while his hair looked more black and smooth seeming to reach toward his back while the bangs covered more of his eyes. Kami stared at him with before wiping away a trickle of blood from her nose getting an amused snort from a red-haired woman next to her. Benny Chan. Naruto said happily before kissing her with all his passion and love leaving her dazed. Remind me to do that more often Kami Chan. Said Benahime in a full tone getting a giggle form Kami which sounded angelic in his ears. Naruto dropped the barrier before walking home with Benahime and Kami eager to get to know each other better only to see a red moon in the sky and the smell of blood getting narrowed eyes from Naruto. Kami Chan, Benny Chan go get Gigi, he ordered as he rushed into the Uchiha compound while the other two get the Hokage. Equals equals Uchiha main house equals equals, you will not live Fugaku, you have outlived your usefulness. A masked man said arrogantly before stabbing Fugaku through his chest getting a pained scream from the man while Isami or Itachi guards her mother with Sasuke knocked out. Isami. Take your mother and go. He gasped out getting negative nods from his daughter not wanting to leave him only for someone to chuckle sinisterly. So you show yourself again Obito. Said a cold voice turning to see Naruto standing on a power pole looking down at the masked Obito with his eternal Rinnegan blazing with fury at seeing the reason for his life. Finally giving up Jinchuriki. He chuckled only to get an amused chuckle from Naruto who is surrounded by a black Yuki cloak six tails swishing behind him. I'm not the container anymore I freed Benahime, which means she is immune to your Sharingan thanks to me while I was turned into the new Jubi. He said showing his eyes having nine tomos making Obito glare at him for ruining his plans. He launched a barrage of fireballs at Naruto only to his shock they got absorbed, growling he blurred behind him to slash through his back only to his shock the sword slipped through him. You didn't think I wouldn't know about one of my own techniques except I'm not as limited as you Obito. Naruto said before socking him in the gut five times in one second sending him crashing into one of the houses. Obito launches himself out of the wreckage engaging Naruto in a bout of taijutsu not knowing he is a master Jiyukin which he found out painfully making him pissed off at being beaten by a child no less. Kaden. Karyu Enden. He shouted as he fired a stream of white hot flames at Naruto who countered with his own except his was green shocking Obito who had to shunshin to avoid getting burnt to death only to cry out in pain from his arm getting severed and burned. He decides to retreat knowing he can't win, you win this time Senju but mark my words I will get all the biju even if I have to plunge this world into darkness, he said insanely before vanishing in a swirling vortex just as the Hokage and squads of Anbu arrived. Naruto ran to a dying Fugaku who smiled seeing him, don't cry for me Naruto, I lived a happy life with my family, he coughed out, getting tears of denial from Naruto. Come on uncle you're not gonna die I can save you, Naruto yelled at him desperately trying to heal him only for his healing chakra to be rejected. That kanai was poisoned, I don't have much time left. He said sadly before coughing up more blood before looking at Isami and Makoto. 
Take care of Isami, and Makoto I know you love the despite your age, take care of them when I couldn't. He rasped out before closing his eyes with a sigh getting a howl of sorrow with Isami and Makoto trying to comfort him as his sobs racked his body. Naruto's eyes snapped open his eternal Rinnegan blazing. Obito-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-o-
He also had his own entry into the International Bingo Book, listed as an X-Class threat, Flea on Sight, his moniker, was the Dark Maelstrom, but it attracted some bad attention especially his Dujutsu and his status along with his Saiyan abilities wondering how someone managed to find that out. He had ninjas from other villages trying to capture him for breeding purposes especially those from the Amazon and Natashiko villages which he often commented was carpet liquor country, a, n. He has some foul mouthness when he wants to he he he, which he got glares for that only for stating the truth, nearly every one of his pursuers were Kunoichi. He also found out that a female Jinchuriki Cage Yagura had also taken an interest in him due to his demonic nature that attracted her like a mate which lead to them battling it out with him as the winner gaining a loyal mate in demon terms which Benahime and Kami teased him about along with Makoto and Isami. Now, Naruto, Saya, and Danzo are running toward wave country since Kakashi in his oh wise wisdom decided to call for backup one day before the attack on the bridge noting Zabuza Momochi will be there making Naruto narrow his eyes at the man who nearly killed his water princess, N. Fitting name for Ne. Naruto is wearing a black cloak with the Senju symbol on the back, black anbu pants, black gloves, black shinobi sandals, and a black mask with the eyeholes being two tomos with eccentric circles around the front, and a large gumbai with an unbreakable chain attached to his wrist via seals for it being endless strapped to his back while his gloves carry seals for every single weapon he mastered. Danzo headed toward the bridge to protect the client while Saya and Naruto went to the client's house to see two thugs dragging a black-haired woman out of the house only for Naruto to swing the blade of his kusari gama slicing their heads off while catching the civilian woman who blushed feeling his muscles under his cloak while staring at his beautiful dark blue eyes. What is your name miss? Tsunami. That child over there is my OSN Inari. Thank you for saving us I didn't want to show my bloodline around that Cyclops and his team. She spat before her form shimmered showing she was wearing the standard Leaf Junin outfit with a tanto strapped to her back while her arm had the symbol for Uchiha shocking him till he saw her eyes morph into the A three-sided shuriken. Mangekio. Saya breathed out shocked. Naruto turned his head toward the bridge, it seems Gato is heading toward the bridge with his men and it seems two Kumo teams are sneaking toward the bridge most likely to capture me. I'll stay here and watch the house go after two San, Itoko. She ordered getting a salute before vanishing in a black flash leaving Saya and Tsunami to guard the house. Wave Bridge. Danzo turns his head to see his apprentice appear next to him in a black flash his Kusari Gama ready, you alright Danzo Sensei. Naruto said looking at a bruised Zabuza fighting a tired Team 7 while a masked hunter Nin is turning Sasuke and Kiba into a pincushion. Yes I'm fine thought I'm sensing a hundred signatures heading toward our location, he was cut off by someone clapping showing a smug looking Gato with his mercenaries smirking arrogantly. I see you never were going to pay me where you midget. Zabuza said innocently getting snickers from everyone as Gato screeched at him before ordering his men to attack getting battle cries as his mercenaries charged Zabuza who grins only for a black masked genin to jump in front of him. I got this. Naruto shouted before channeling Raiden Chakra through his Kusari Gama giving it a black sparking edge before he started slicing, and dismembering all the mercenaries coming at him in a beautiful dance of death bobbing and weaving from one target to the next showing him why he's called the Dark Maelstrom. Zabuza stared in awe. I haven't seen anyone this skilled with the Kusari Gama since Hanzo, he shouted getting a smirk from Danzo. That's because he is a master in all ninja arts especially weapons of all kind plus he's the heir of three great clans and direct descendant of the sage himself. Danzo said proudly planning on rubbing it in the face of every junin at the chunin exams that he trained the most powerfulest genin in history. Zabuza stared with bulged eyes at how masterfully he used the weapon of used by the legendary Hanzo the Salamander until he reached Gato who pissed himself in fear as Naruto picked him up by his throat and started pleading to give him anything he wants. I want you to die. He roared and swung the weighted end channeling Bakuten Chakra as it hit causing Gato to explode in a shower of gore making them blanch at how brutal he is except Danzo and Zabuza including the masked hunter Nin. Naruto suddenly caught the blade of a raiden covered katana not even flinching before clenching she fist causing the sword to explode in a shower of metal strips causing the assailant to jump back showing it to be two kumo teams. What are you doing here kumo nin? Naruto asked coldly making one of the blonde haired girls raise an eyebrow at how cool he sounds until one of the more arrogant nin spoke up, the council of kumo has ordered you to surrender yourself to give it up. Naruto stared at him only for him to take his mask off and put it in a seal on his wrist showing his handsome face making the females blush especially a cat-eyed blonde and a red-haired girl. 
Naruto sealed his Kusari Gama away and unsheathed Benahime slowly its blood-red blade gleaming beautifully making the cat-eyed girl along with the cold-eyed blonde Samui back away at the intent to kill rolling off of that sword. Scream. They paled as he whispered the attack that shredded a whole Anbu squad in one move. Benahime. Naruto shouted as he slashed sending a blood-red blade at the Kumo Nin who spoke instantly causing him to turn into a shower of red mist getting scared looks from them at how he easily destroyed one of their teammates. Reikage sama has asked for your audience, Naruto-san. Samui asked politely inwardly frightened at his piercing look till he sighed and looked at Danzo who nodded. Lead the way. Naruto said annoyed wondering if he was gonna have to meme the next person who annoys him until he sees a pair of chakra cuffs slammed on his wrists by a smug looking redhead. Raising an eyebrow amused his hands twitched and the cuffs suddenly exploded making their eyes bulge at him breaking such strong cuffs that blocked off any access to chakra and he broke them with physical strength alone. HN. Like that would work on me, let's go. He said coldly before tree jumping toward Kuma with the two teams following leaving an amused Danzo and a fuming Team 7 while Zabuza and Haku are thinking of joining Konoha. Kumo three hours later. Naruto and his escort soon enter Kumogakir no Sato which he noticed looked more lively than Konoha, which was exhilarating to him seeing children playing while the adults gave the cat girl nods of respect and admiration making him know instantly the girl was a Jinchuriki. He stopped when an Anbu team appears in front of him and instantly shunshin him to an interrogation room where the others are. Naruto saw he was in an interrogation room behind bars with the two teams from before looking at him with pity only to get a rude snort which pissed them off severely. What the is your problem buddy? The girl named Yugido hissed wondering why he isn't scared like all genin should be only for a large pressure to slam down on them looking up they see Naruto's eyes glowing with an annoyed look on his face. You will know your place in the pecking order Nibi. He glared down at her making her feel small while Nibi inside the seal is trying to not to take over Yugito's body and rape him. Naruto let up the pressure as soon as the rakage along with his bodyguard and assistant enter the room with his brother. Naruto saw one of the Anbu smirk at him and spat in his face only for him to reach and grab him by his vest and slam him face first into the bars breaking his neck shocking everyone at how cold he looked. Naruto looked at the others. Anyone else want to join him? He asked calmly getting negative nods getting a snort from Naruto who sat down on the bench not looking bothered. May I ask why your idiotic bolt squad put me in here since I entered with those two politely? Naruto said coldly pointing at Yugito and Samui who looked embarrassed. You woman are lucky I didn't erase you along with Nibi from existence. He glared at her making Nibi shiver inside the seal mentally talking to Gyuki through their link. Your father made a marriage contract between you and Mabui when we first met as cages. He said respectfully recognition flashing in his eyes while looking at the silver-haired beauty, her dark mocha-colored skin and beautiful figure. Beautiful. He murmured making Mabui blush at how casual her fiancé sounded before watching him walk up to the bars before poking them causing it to fall down making everything quiet. Now what were you going to say? Naruto asked Yugito sweetly, too sweet getting a nervous laugh from the nibi container only to get patted on the head making her eye twitch at being patted on the head like a house animal. You were one. He quipped making her fume at him getting sniggers from Karabi and her team making her pout at that boy getting to her like this. Naruto suddenly smirked evilly. Yugito did your tenant explain to that you and your team attacked the heir of the Jubi. He asked innocently getting looks of fear from Karabi and Yugito with their biju screaming in terror as he smirked cruelfully. Don't worry I won't hurt you Gyu chan and Mata chan. He teased making the biju go quiet before blushing wondering how he knew about their true gender only to roar in fury at the prank Kyubi pulled on them. He chuckled. I'll leave you two to catch up, but you better not hurt her gaki. He threatened getting a cheeky grin from Naruto getting barks of laughter from Mabui which sounded like ringing bells in his ears. Mabui soon walked with him around the streets of Kumo, so Naruto-kun how is it being a genin? She asked. Tokabetsu genin actually. Really, you must have worked hard for it. Yes I was already cage level at the ripe age of 5 impressive isn't it? He said honestly getting a shocked look for Mabui at her fiancé already being a powerhouse so she asked him questions about his childhood only to be saddened at how idiotic people can be just to ignore their cage's wish and disgust to abuse a child. Naruto noticed a bar and walked in with Mabui to get a drink. They soon had a bottle of sake they shared and ended up getting along fine the date was going well until he saw some junin move toward them only for everyone to tense at their symbol signifying them as the Kinkaku and Ginkaku forces. 
Mabui frowned at their date being ruined so she got the idea to make out with her fiancé since they are getting along fine with him smirking at their fuming looks. May I ask what the infamous Ginkaku and Kinkaku forces want with me and my fiancé? He asked sarcasm in his tone making them glare at him. We want you to get out of Kumo, you aren't welcomed here Konoha Nin. One of them sneered only to get a cold look from Naruto who stood up standing face to face with them. Says the one who was nearly responsible along with your bastard Sandame who had the gall to try and kidnap my mother to turn her into a breeding stock when she was little. Naruto shot coldly his eyes flashing to a poisonous emerald killing intent radiating in the air while they had smug looks on their faces. So what it's not like she was wanted? One said uncaring only to get a fist smashed into his face sending him face first into the wall breaking his neck. They stared at the dead body before seeing Naruto look at them with hatred. I don't give a damn what he says I am going to wipe you monsters out right here and now. He snarled about to avenge his mother only for Yugito and her team along with a squad of Anbu to stand between Naruto and them. Naruto-san we cannot allow you to kill them, Samui said politely. Naruto gives her a look filled with malice and rage. Either you get out of my way or you will join this trash as a bloodstain on the wall. He said coldly making them flinch while the Kinkaku forces bristle at him calling them trash. You have 10 seconds Nibi and do not think your mentor can help you even with Hachibi helping him. He said even colder, as his eternal Rinnegan flashed blazing with malice. Mabui tugged on his arm getting his attention, yes Mabui-chan? Let's leave Naruto-kun since my so-called friends only follow orders. She spat coldly at them making them flinch and lower their heads in shame as they walk away except for one idiot to mark the end of their group. Keep your pet on a leash. Naruto suddenly stopped before chuckling sinisterly while Mabui gives him a cold smile making Yugito and Samui shiver all of a sudden. So you want to act all macho and shit? Naruto said coldly before vanishing in a feat of speed shocking them at how fast he looked and cringed at the sound of fists pounding someone only to see Naruto beating them down one after the next until one was left who decided to take Samui hostage getting a distressed scream from the normally stoic woman. The man laughs at him arrogantly not seeing he was just a clone till Naruto's gumbai smacked him into the realm of unconsciousness. Samui bowed, thank you for saving me Naruto-sama. She said humbly getting a look of understanding wondering if he misjudged her before shrugging as he walked to a hotel for him and Mabui. He went to bed with a pandy-clad Mabui sleeping quietly on his chest her silver hair pooling around her back with a cute snore making him chuckle and vow to protect his mates with his life and to destroy Obito Uchiha. They shall soon feel the wrath of the Jubi no Ukami. Mabui grumbles in her sleep before moving her hips back and forth unconsciously making Naruto groan in pleasure from what Mabui is doing. Jinheim, not right now. He muttered only for Mabui to continue doing it with a blush on her face. Knock knock. Naruto's eyes snap open glancing at the door with annoyance before placing Mabui beside him and walking to the door and opened it to show Yugito and a blushing Karui who suddenly stopped below the belt. Are you going to continue to stare at me? Naruto said bluntly getting sheepish chuckles before they had sad looks in their eyes. We're sorry about the way we acted last week. We were following orders from the council, Naruto. Karui said remorsefully getting a searching look from Naruto who had some mocha arms wrapped around his waist. You're forgiven. Mabui said cheerfully rubbing her s against his back arousing him slightly and bopped Mabui on the forehead who whined childishly. Not in front of guests Mabui-chan. He chided making her pout cutely at him only getting a blank stare. Mabui-chan. That won't work on me I'm immune to it. He deadpanned at her getting shocked looks from Karui and Yugito especially Nibi who thought the puppy dog eyes were unbeatable. This hunk, actually resisted that dreaded jutsu. Nibi said looking at Naruto with respect and wondering if he is in need of another mate plus she is getting tired of being in a cage. I will only let you out Mata-chan if you behave yourself, cause any trouble I will let Benny-chan, decide on your punishment. He warned with Nibi nodding rapidly not wanting to be punished by her older sister who was a nymphomaniac. She shuddered if Benahime wanted to relieve some stress using her and felt herself being pulled from the seal. Naruto pulled out a night blue chakra before setting it on the ground as it took the form of a tan-skinned woman with a massive G-cup rack wearing a blue battle kimono with two swaying tails behind her and a Cheshire grin before jumping in Naruto's arms kissing him fully which he gave her a smack on the ass making her whimper before standing down getting jaw drops from Mabui, Karui, and Yugito. This guy tamed Nibi. What did I say Mata-chan? Naruto said sternly making Nibi whimper at her loss of pleasure. Not to misbehave Naruto-sama, 
she said submissively getting a nod before purring as, he scratched her ears and allowed her to stand up and stood beside Mabui waiting for Naruto to get dressed and watched him come out wearing a black high-collar shirt with the Senju and Uzumaki symbols on the back, black anbu pants with a red rope belt around his waist with Benahime tucked into it and black ninja sandals and his headband tied around his forehead leaving his eye covered slightly. You ready to go Mabui-chan? Mabui nodded before Shun shining to the gate where the Rakage and all of her friends stood with gifts for Naruto 3 in particular a multicolored fan, a sword with the kanji for curse, a golden rope, and a gourd. The banana fan, the cursing sword, the binding soul rope, and the recording gourd. Naruto said in awe getting nods from E and B. We want you to have them they are yours by birthright. The man said honestly getting a grateful nod before Naruto unsheathed Benahime and channeled his chakra through it and watched the items glow white before the blue aura on the blade turned a silver white color signifying the powers of the items were added into the blade. I was able to transfer the powers of the items here, into my sword so I can use them more easily. The nin just gawked at him. He literally just said his sword now contains the powers of the four deadliest ninja tools wielded by the sage. Who is she? Samui pointed at Nibi who grinned a Cheshire grin making Hachibi in her cage blink three times before screaming and ranting in fury making B's head hurt before looking at Nibi in surprise. Nibi. He said in disbelief getting wide eyes from everyone even E. Nibi nodded with a teasing grin on her face. How do you get out kitty cat? B rapped badly only to yelp from getting smacked on the head by Naruto's sheathed Zanpakuto. B. What have we discussed about rapping? Naruto said in irritation getting a roll of eyes from Karabi. No rapping, unless you got any talent. He drawled getting stares from everyone even Hachibi. Did he actually make a good rap? They thought in disbelief before snapping out of their thoughts at Karabi's voice. 8 oh, wants freedom too, and I won't have to worry about not having my Yuki, she's allowing me to keep her power even though she'll still have it. Naruto nodded before he pressed his palm on B's stomach and pulled out a grayish orb before it took the form of a dark-skinned woman making nearly everyone's jaw drop at how gorgeous she looks, Hachibi wears a black long-sleeve jacket over a sports bra, black jeans with a black chain for a belt, and combat boots, her eyes a brown mocha, and black smooth hair flowing down her back. Hachibi looks around before her eyes landed on Naruto with a grin she wrapped an arm around his shoulder. We are going to have lots of fun Naruto-sama. She leered in his ear making him smirk at her challengingly. That's if you can keep up Hachi-chan. He teased making everyone else making, ooing, motions while Hachibi grips him by his shirt and pulls him into her bosom only to moan as he licked her chest. Mabui quickly hugged everyone before they stood next to each other. I'll visit with Mabui. Next time you remember watch out for Akatsuki. He said seriously before they vanished in a black flash towards the Konoha gates. E smiled, that kid's gonna go far I just know it. He thought before heading back to his office to finish his paperwork and get some training in with his brother not seeing a Venus flytrap sink into the tree. Akatsuki HQ, in a cave with nine members in a room one with ringed eyes spoke. Report Zetsu. The plant man Zetsu of Kusa nodded. The Hachibi and Nibi are out of our reach now. The spy said grimly getting looks of shock from everyone except one with a one eye narrowed in suspicion. Why is that Zetsu? The orange-haired man demanded. Naruto Senju Namikaze Uzumaki was able to release the Hachibi and Nibi from their hosts without killing them and gave them human forms meaning they are more powerful now and their former hosts still are able to use demonic chakra. He said fearfully making the room go silent, even the masked man was quiet. The orange-haired man named Pain was in thought along with a blue-haired woman. My family still lives? He thought before nodding at his friend Conan. Forget him and focus on gathering the other tailed beasts if you can, and get more funds for our organization now go. He ordered getting nods as they left one by one leaving pain, Conan and the masked man who is shaking with rage and fury before punching a hole in the wall. That damn brat is messing with my plans, he growled getting blank looks from them, but inwardly they were laughing their asses off at the guy who calls himself Madara. Does Toby, need a band aid? Conan asked innocently getting a glare from Toby while Payne snickers quietly making the man snarl at them before stomping out the room passing by many snickering members of Akatsuki. Payne glanced at Conan. Make sure the information on Itoko is destroyed Conan. He said before walking out leaving Conan to herself before vanishing in a wave of paper to look over Nagato. Hokage Tower two days later, 
Naruto sighs walking through the street only to stop as he senses a signature with the same Yuki as Benahime making his eyes widen. Ka-san. He thought before dashing inside the hospital only to be blocked by a squad of Anbu with Jiria and Kakashi in front of him. Get out of my way trash. He said coldly his eyes turning a poisonous emerald making some shiver and sweat while Jiria shakes his head. You are not getting to her she is staying under our control and you are not allowed to arg. He cried out in pain from getting punched through the wall from a pissed off Naruto who was enveloped in his five tail state before turning to Kakashi and the others. Naruto blurred before launching a barrage of spin kicks to the Anbu and knocking Kakashi out with a headbutt to the face breaking his nose in the process. Weakling. Snorting Naruto walked forward only to stop and look behind him to see the council moving toward him only to flare his KI stopping them in their tracks. Naruto stomped toward a fat civilian and grabbed him by his throat his hand crackling with black lightning. Why did you hide my mother from me bastard? He demanded his Ryatsu flaring making some of them sputter. We needed something to keep you under control should you go up against your betters one of them said arrogantly only for his chest to explode outward as it was pierced by Naruto's arm with a cold merciless look on his face before tossing the boy away and running toward the place where his mother was. Underground room. A few civilians were leering at Kashina's unconscious body only for the door to get ripped off its hinges showing an extremely pissed off Naruto who spots them and charges them at immense speeds. Get away from my mother. He roared before launching Ryatsu blasts painting the room red with blood as a white mask with the visage of a fox started to appear on his face only for him to smash it to pieces before looking toward his missing mother's body who was starting to wake up. Her green eyes opened and blinked looking around till they landed on a black-haired boy with whisker marks on his faces shedding tears. Ka-san. Her eyes widened. Soichi. Naruto nodded before hugging his mother tightly sobbing into her chest while she rubs his head softly before falling limp just as Anko came into the room. In here. Kashina's in here. She shouted to the others as the Sandame along with the clan heads moved into the room to see Kashina singing to a sleeping Naruto. Makoto stares at the scene with tears in her eyes. He's finally at peace. She thanked Kami for giving Naruto a chance for happiness once again. Naruto suddenly groaned before his eyes opened and looked into his mother's green ones showing love, happiness, and want while hers showed worry, happiness, sadness, and joy, but Naruto suddenly looked back before jumping up with Benahime out in a fighting stance. Soichi. Calm down there my friends. She hugged him getting a hesitant nod from Naruto who sheathes Benahime before standing beside his mother like a guard which she blushed at. Soichi, I can handle myself. She whined only to get a stern look from her son. No you are not Ka-san. He chided sternly making her pout childishly getting snickers from Makoto and Sume making her glare at them before huffing indignantly. Jiria and Kakashi staggered into the room only to cry out in surprise as a rage-driven Naruto grabs them by their throats and slammed them into the wall hard and squeezed hard. You bastards just can't get enough from nearly ruining my life now you want to take my mother away from all kill before I let you take her away from me. He snarled ferally before his hands lit up with red lightning and tried to thrust for Kakashi's heart only for Makoto, Sume, and Hiyashi to restrain him making him growl in anger as he struggled in their strong grips. Let me go. He shouted at them and threw them off before lunging at Kakashi's chest who managed to dodge only to get knocked away from the explosion from the impact of the lightning blade's chakra, before Naruto could lunge at him his arms were restrained by Enem. Let me go Enma. He roared struggling out of the Monkey King's grip who shook his head sadly. Naruto, you have to calm down you're not in the right state of mind, he said sternly making Naruto's eyes flash a teal green before he instantly went into his Super Saiyan 1 form and began to slowly overpower Enma who had a shocked look on his face before getting knocked into the wall. Naruto charged up another red lightning blade and was about to pierce Kakashi only for some golden chains to grip his arms softly looking back to see his mother shaking her head making him try to stop himself from obeying. Soichi-kun, he isn't worth it. She said softly making him shake his head with tears leaking out. Ka-san. Why? These bastards ruined my life why am I not allowed to avenge you? He cried out in sorrow and anger struggling against her chakra chain's calming presence as it was draining him of his energy making him kneel. Soichi kun you are better than that don't stoop to their level please. Kashina pleaded looking into his teal eyes making his head bow in submission. Yes, Ka San. He surrendered to activating his rakery before punching Jiria out knocking his jaw loose and kicked Kakashi in the face before spitting on him and walked back beside his mother and kneeled beside her like a loyal guard as she petted his head. I'm not angry at you Soichi kun 
Just relax okay. She said soothingly getting a quiet nod from her son who kept his eyes to floor. Yes, Ka Sama. He said stoically making her raise an eyebrow and felt a bit touched at her title from him, but had to stamp out any perverted thoughts of her son before looking toward the clan heads. Soichi kun? Yes, Ka Sama? Naruto asked looking at her out of the corner of his eyes. Take me to our estate I need to rest. She said tiredly getting a nod as her son picked her up bridal style getting cooing sounds from Anko and Yugo making Kashina blush as her son carried her through the halls and outside only to meet four annoyances in the form of Ino, Sakura, Kiba, and Sasuke. WHO are you carrying back? She was cut off from Naruto kicking her in the forehead launching her into a wall with a cold look in his eye before turning to the other three with Benahime in his hand. Step aside or Benahime will taste your blood. He said darkly making Ino step aside except for Kiba and Sasuke leering at his mother only for him to slap them across the face with the flat side of his nodashi leaving a red line on their faces. Move now. Naruto growled before aiming to take their heads off only for Kashina to shake her head making him growl under his breath before walking to their home, not before turning to Kiba with a cold look in his eye making Kashina secretly aroused. When it comes time for the Chunin exams, your lives will be in my hands. He growled before resuming his walk leaving a scared Ino, Kiba and Sasuke. Namikaze Estate. Miko-chan for the last time I will not apologize to those assholes on the council and nothing is going to make me. He said in irritation a vein pulsing on his temple. Naruto-kun. They're threatening to banish you. Makoto whined childishly only to get a snort from Naruto who finds that notion very amusing. They do that I will literally allow Iwa to come here and go to town and I won't help. He said coldly making Kami and Benahime wince knowing he has every reason to. You're whipped. Nibi quipped only to yelp at getting hit in the back of the head with a ladle that instantly flew back in Naruto's hand who had a twitching eyebrow. You were saying Mata-chan. Naruto said dangerously making her and Hachibi laugh nervously at the glare he gave them. I don't know why Ka-sama wouldn't let me finish off the Cyclops and the damn toad. He grumbled darkly making Kami and Isami sigh before running their fingers through his hair making him sigh in content. She didn't want you to prove the villagers right about you. Isami said softly only to get a snort. Not like I ain't one now. He growled under his breath darkly as his thoughts were getting darker only for Nibi to grow annoyed and toss a ball at him smacking him in the head making everyone go still. Quit your whining, she stopped her rant only to see Naruto giving her a very evil look before taking out a spiked paddle making everyone's eyes widen and started to whimper in fear at the words of behavior corrector. Naruto pointed a finger at Nibi and motioned her to come to him only for her to whimper and bolt out of the room only for a dark twisted grin to spread on his face and purred seductively. I love it when they run. He purred making them both horny and scared before he vanished in a boom and soon a pained yet pleasured scream echoed. Please Naruto-sama. I'll be good I promise. Nibi's voice pleaded only for a sadistic, yet seductive purr to sound out making them shiver as their panties wettened. I don't think so my Nako-chan, I think I'm going to have to discipline you till you learn not to behave like that, he said darkly. Smack. 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 Ooh Naruto-sama, that feels so good. Nibi screamed in an orgasmic voice as her master punished her ass with his paddle. Will you be good now? He said smoothly. Yes, Naru-sama, I'll be your good Nako. She squealed in a dazed voice before he and her walked in getting wide-eyed looks as Nibi came in with a zombie-like look with her eyes clouded with before sitting down beside Manda who gave her a jealous look. Naruto roamed over the other girls with a dark smile. Anyone else needs to be disciplined? They shook their heads rapidly to wanting to get the same punishment. Good. He quipped before walking to his room as they let out a breath they were holding before eyeing the stairs with a wary look. Remind me not to whine at him. Makoto said fearfully getting nods of agreement. Manda-chan, could you come help me with my problem? Naruto called the Snake Queen who suddenly grinned pervertedly before walking toward the stairs swaying her hips. Yes, Naruto-sama. She hissed fully getting glares of envy from Kami and Benahime, even the stoic Isami glared at her back. Lucky. They muttered only to freeze as a confused Kashina walked into the room and blinked. Where's Soichi-kun? They didn't say anything only to freeze as moaning and groaning sounds were heard upstairs causing everyone to stare up at the ceiling at the lewd sounds. Oh yes Naruto-sama. Manda cried out in pleasure wet smacking sounds being heard making Makoto's and Kami's jaw hit the floor at the house shaking. You like that don't you my hubby Jote? 
Naruto growled huskily as banging noises were getting louder causing very perverted thoughts to erupt within Kashina's mind as a scantily dressed Kashina dubbed as, Aero Kashina, brawled with a more formally dressed Kashina dubbed as, Motherly Kashina. I will not do that to Soichi-kun. Motherly Kashina shouted defiantly only to get a evil grin from Aero Kashina as chakra chains erupted from her back and restrained Motherly Kashina who struggled to break free only to moan at the chain moving under her dress rubbing against her womanhood while Aero Kashina smirked triumphantly. It's my turn to take the reins, so sit back and enjoy the show that's if you can stay awake that is. Aero Kashina cackled as she took control of Kashina's mind. Naruto-sama. Harder. Faster. Manda squealed as the sounds got even more looter and louder being heard by everyone in the village who were giving the Namikaze estate a look of disbelief, even the other countries were looking toward the direction of the sounds. Get ready. Manda Haim, I'm going to release a very special jutsu. Naruto grunted as he channeled a large buildup of chakra making Kami's eyes widen along with Benahime. Run. They screamed a warning, but were too late to escape. Konohabar. Who in the hell is making that noise? Hannah yelled in disbelief with a massive blush on her face looking in the direction of Naruto's home with other Junin and Genin teams blushing like red apples wondering when the lewd noises are going to stop. That sounds like Naruto. Asuma mused getting spit takes from nearly everyone who had anime round eyes while Hiyashi whistles in amazement. He sure is going at it. He muttered under his breath while Hanabi, Hanada, and Neji had their eyes glazed over in with blood leaking from their noses. Girls. Hanada smirked getting similar looks from Rin, Hanabi, and Neji making the clan heads get a feel of dread. Yes, Hanada-sama. They chorused making everyone turn toward them. Me want. Hanada howled ferally before dashing toward the Namikaze estate with her sister, cousin, and Rin following her including Hana leaving a bunch of wide eye shinobi and clan heads behind as they watched them enter the house. Oh yes Naruto-sama. Hanada's voice cried out making Hiyashi's eyes bulge getting snickers from everyone. Oh. Yeah. That's my ALPHAAAAA. Hana howled in pleasure making Kiba faint making everyone look at him in shock. Oh yes just like that Makoto-chan. Everyone's eyes bulged out their sockets including those in Kami's realm the worst was Sasuke who was paling rapidly. Are you telling me? Choza trailed off. That Naruto. Shikaku stared down the road. Is banging Makoto Uchiha. Inoichi yelled in realization making several guys faint while Sasuke crumples to the floor foaming at the mouth. Oh, yes. Soichi Kun. Everyone's jaw dropped to the floor cracking it even Minato in the afterlife jaw dropped with wide eyes before ranting it was unfair his son got all of those women. How long has this kid been going? Homura asked in disbelief with the others nodding. I think that counted as his fourth hour. Choza said in awe getting filled eyes from Sume, Yoshino, and a few female Anbu. They suddenly sensed a large chakra build up making Hiyashi's eyes widen before Shun shining to his room where seals are placed to repel chakra confusing them. What is Naruto doing? Inoichi asked. He's about to use a jutsu. Shikaku answered. What kind of jutsu would he use during? Sume trailed off before her eyes bulged and ran like a bat out of hell. He's gonna use the chakra storm jutsu. Sume screamed in terror making several men's eyes widen in horror before running to their homes like hell. No way in hell I'm getting raped by a bunch of women. Danzo screamed running for his life with his teammate Serutobi speeding past him like a blur leaving a dust cloud. Oi, Matt Aura. Danzo screamed before running inside the Serutobi compound before setting earth barriers and seals to keep out chakra and a bunch of screaming men. Ninpo. Chakra Storm J-U-T-S-U-U-U-U-U. Naruto's voice roared before a giant sea of blue chakra swept over the elemental natans making a lot of women jump at the nearest man next to them and ended up raping them on the spot while several guys locked themselves in chakra repelling rooms, even Akatsuki barely made it to a safe room. The worst of it was that several female and male nin dogs dry humped the civilians in the bar mentally scaring a lot of people for life. In the Namikaze estate Naruto slept with various girls around him, his girls along with Kashina surprisingly, with a smile on his face two girls snuggling into his arms. Next day. I nominate Sakura Haruno, Kiba Inazuka, and Sasuke Uchiha. I nominate Ino Yamanaka, Choji Akamichi, and Shikamaru Nara. I nominate Hanada Hayuga, Shino Abarame, and Yakumo Karama. 
I nominate Naruto Senju Uzumaki Namikaze, Danzo said seriously getting shouts of protest from Iruka. Iruka, Naruto is more than ready for these exams only ones who aren't as Team 7 and Ms. Ino he sneered at Kakashi's annoyed face. Iruka became quiet at what Danzo said and it was true, Naruto was already deadly when he first came to the academy, and only got more deadlier in the passing years. He's basically a one-man army on a higher caliber than Madara Uchiha and Hashirama Senju, he thought in pride having taught such a powerhouse before nodding at the Hokage who grinned under his hat knowing his surrogate grandson is going to rock the competition completely. Inform your students of their participation, dismissed. He ordered getting nods as the sensei's sunshine to find their students. With Naruto Naruto grumbled irritably lately he has been more grumpier and pissed off than usual and chalked it up to the constant annoyances in this villages. That includes these pathetic pieces of trash hiding my mother from me, though I didn't think she would act like that from not having contact all those years. He said the last part with a small blush while everyone who heard him blushed heavily that jutsu of his literally caused there to go haywire. He sighed before going into a dairy store and came out carrying a large bottle of chocolate milk and was drinking it but stopped when someone tried to should shove him out the way only for him to grip the person's shoulder tightly. I am a really pissy mood this week and if you bump into me like that again I will rip your arm from its socket clean off, Suna Nin. He said coldly making the cat looking man nod rapidly before Naruto's hand left his shoulder only for the Suna Nin to try and er punch him only for Naruto spin around him in a slow motion fashion before launching three fast back shots with his fists sending the puppeteer through a row of fences in front of nearly all the rookie teams. Naruto turned to a blonde-haired pigtailed girl with a fan on her back raising an eyebrow. You going to try and help him? He asked daring her to attack him suddenly Naruto unsheathed Benahime before launching a wave of lightning at a tree on his right only for a red blur to land in front of him. Ichibi no Shukaku. Naruto said boredly looking down at Gara with a half-lidded gaze that didn't hide the dangerous edge in them, but noticed it was a girl in front of him and remembered that all of the biju were female and frowned when he saw the signs of insomnia in the girl's beautiful seafoam green eyes along with loneliness and want. Who are you mother is very quiet. She asked in a raspy voice that made his eyes soften realizing she hasn't used her voice in how long, and was raspy from the desert climate and misuse since she had no one to talk to. Naruto leaned down into her ear getting a very faint blush on her cheeks. I am Naruto Senju Uzumaki Namikaze, but you can call me Jubi-sama. He whispered in her ear getting a surprised look from her normally stoic nature. Naruto noticed someone was watching them and slowly turned his head, his eternal Rinnegan active narrowed sharply. Get out of that tree Iwa Nin. Naruto said coldly as a team of rock ninja landed in front of them one of them had short black hair and pink eyes. What are you doing here Kuro-chan? Naruto asked in a not so amused tone making Kuritsuchi laugh nervously while the rookie 12 eavesdropped on Naruto's conversation. What are you doing spying on me? Asked a voice behind them making them spin around to see Naruto looking at them with a bored gaze, yet annoyed. What are you doing speaking with Iwa Nin? Ino accused her gossip queen persona coming out only for Naruto to narrow his eyes at her. I don't think who I talk to is any of your business Yamanaka-san. He shot coldly his cold persona slamming on full blast making Ino shiver. Naruto-kun, are these people bothering you? Gara asked softly beside him getting a raised eyebrow from Naruto. Naruto-kun? I just met her and she's already calm around me, but I guess it's expected from her being discriminated by her own village. He thought sadly before rubbing Gara's long maroon hair making her sigh in content while Shukaku inside the seal is purring happily. Gara-chan. I want you to relax, because I'm going to allow you to sleep. Naruto said much to her shock and hope. Father told me my seal was defective and couldn't be fixed. She explained about how the seal was done with Naruto getting pissed off by the second and when she was done his KI was overwhelming making some birds flying die while Ino and the others were breathing heavily from the pressure. How can Naruto be able to channel this much killing intent? Shikamaru cursed in his mind sweating at the amount killing intent his friend is channeling. Naruto did a few one-handed seals before his fingertips lit up with black flames that had the kanji for ire, water, earth, wood, and metal and placed his palm on Gara's navel making her moan at the warm feeling. Fuenjutsu. Soul extraction. He shouted before pulling out something that was struggling against him getting narrowed eyes from Naruto. So this old bastard had the nerve to seal itself into one of Benihime's sisters no worries you'll be going to the death god's stomach for defying him. 
he thought grinning darkly before pulling out the soul of a priest who was glaring at him only to gasp in horror from seeing the King of Hell statue behind Naruto. You can't do this to me. I am a god. The insane priest shouted fearfully only to get a cruel smirk. The only god in this world is me. Naruto's eyes glowed with immense power before tossing the soul into the statue's mouth and watched it chew him and swallow not before. Burp. Naruto sighed before sending the statue back to the underworld, just in time to catch an exhausted Gara who is crying into his shoulder in happiness and joy at finally being able to sleep. Thank you, thank you. She chanted before planting a kiss on his lips and began to kiss him hungrily making his eyes widen in shock. Gara chan slow down. Naruto chided getting a sheepish chuckle from the red head getting a shocked look from Tamari who rounded on Naruto. Did you seriously do that the elders in Suna are going to come storming here to punish you for that, even though I thank you for helping my sister? Tamari shouted at him getting a look of disbelief from Choji and Shikamaru and suddenly snorted. Tamari san. In case you haven't noticed our friend Naruto is not your average ninja turn to page 49 in the bingo book and you'll see what we mean. Choji said with mirth getting a confused frown from the fan user and did what he told and when she saw his name she froze in shock, awe, and terror. Yur. Tamari gasped getting a dark smirk from Naruto while Gara is looking up at him curiosity in her eyes while listening to Shukaku telling her to choose him as a mate. Yes, I'm Konoha's dark maelstrom, and I'm pretty sure I already have a flea on sight order from all countries correct. He said mischievously getting a dumb nod from Tamari before sensing someone trying to sneak up on him. Haruno and Uchiha take one more step and you will meet your end at my blade. He threatened looking to see two very jealous looking Team 7 members while Kiba was avoiding looking him in the eye in shame which Naruto filed away for later. How did you get into the bingo book Dobi? I should have that rank. Sasuke demanded arrogantly only to get an unladylike snort from Gara snuggling into Naruto's arm. The only Dobi in my opinion is you you spoiled brat. He glared down at Sasuke who was glaring hot daggers at him before Sakura tried to throw a kanai at him only for it to be sliced in half by his finger that had a black static aura. Do you want me to use your giant forehead for target practice Haruno? He warned in a malicious tone making her pee herself in fear before running away. Prepare to get your ass kicked in the exam Zuchiha. He taunted and was about to walk away, but smirked making Gara and Tamari blush at how foxy it was. I'm in the CRA meaning you'll have to share me Gara chan Tamari chan and Uchiha your mom's howler, he said in a sing-song voice making their eyes bulge that was him last night that made all of that noise and heard Sasuke screech in fury. See ya later Kuro chan, zoom chom. He smirked at their blushes before vanishing in a swirling vortex toward the Hokage Tower where he sensed someone he hasn't seen before. Hokage Tower. Damn it sensei, Minato's kid is getting too powerful and out of control. Jiria shouted at his sensei he was cursing inwardly at Naruto not understanding that it's for the good of the village and hadn't been able to seal his memories away. A blonde busty woman with a black haired woman wearing a kimono a pig in her arms are glaring daggers at him with hatred and rage in their eyes. You listen here Jiria. You and these damned arrogant bigots have no right to control his life. I came here to see my godson who I was lied to about being dead from the council and if you think I'm gonna let anyone stunt his growth as a shinobi you better bring a whole ing army. Tsunade growled at her teammate who frowned deeply at her. The prophecy stated that the chosen one had to live a life of anguish and depression before being molded into a savior, not a dark, cold teenager who would frighten a biju, he ranted only for a cold voice to appear in the room. So you kept my Ka San away from me, because you thought it would keep me on a leash for this shithole to control me, Naruto said coldly making Tsunade and Shizune shiver at how cold he is and noticed the war fan with the Senju crest instead of the Uchiha one and was colored black with red lines. You wouldn't understand Gaki. Jiria jeered only to get a blank stare from Naruto who raised an eyebrow getting raised eyebrows from Tsunade and Shizune, even Tonton. This kid has excellent control over his emotions seems this is why Jiria doesn't like him this way he's the example of a perfect shinobi. She thought in awe before frowning seeing dark spots around his eyelids. He severely stressed out, why can't Jiria and this village give the kid a break? Why do your eyes have signs of getting no sleep, and stress? Shizune asked looking at his dark blue eyes carefully getting an irritated, tired sigh. Blame your dumbass of a teammate in this village for thinking I'm a weapon and I'm very tempted to go into my biju form and raise this place to the ground, he growled looking Jiria coldly. Your father wouldn't want you like this. 
Jiria said frowning only to get a scoff from Naruto. Like your opinion matters to me I already told the toads want nothing to do with you and yet you continuously continue to follow that stupid fortune cookie shit like those arrogant Hyuga elders, you are no better than your pathetic teammate Orochimaru who I had to save Manda from since he wanted to experiment on her clan. Naruto stared Jiria right in the eye while Tsunade gasped. You mean Manda is a girl? Naruto nodded. She's one of my mates and Jiria Baka is angry that I'm not a very forgiving person, since I decided to insult and meme any stupid asshole of a civilian on that council who tries to get a mob to attack me which will end up with me reducing the civilian population to dangerously low levels. He smirked sadistically making Jiria try and strike him only for Naruto's gloved hands to grip his fist unflinchingly. Naruto slowly clenches the fist in his hand making Jiria wince till he started howling in pain as Naruto slowly crushed the bones with a dark cruel smile on his face. Did you really think I would not get you back for siding with the civilians on keeping my mother locked away from me? I will tell you bastards again. She belongs to me. He said in a demonic voice holding extreme love and loyalty for Kashina which made Serutobi, Tsunade, and Shizune gasp at the affection in his voice. Would he really go that far just for Kashina? Tsunade thought and felt a twinge of jealous and sadness before stamping it out not wanting to have that mindset around her godson. Another thing Jiria Teme. Naruto added before his eyes morphed into the eternal Rinnegan shocking them except the Sandame who had a smirk on his face. H how do you have the Rinnegan? Jiria demanded only to get a raised eyebrow. This is not the regular Rinnegan this is a combination of the eternal Mangekyo and the Rinnegan which I already have mastered and also I am the new Jubi which means Kayubi isn't inside me anymore she is at the estate helping Kashina train back to her SS rank level along with Nibi and Hachibi, he said grinning at their surprised looks. You can't just take away bijus from the other countries, Ga. He grunted in immense pain only getting a blank stare from Naruto. In case you don't know since I am the Jubi I decide if any of these villages deserve to keep the Biju, not you or any of those biased idiots who hate the container for something that wasn't their fault. Naruto said harshly. Jinchuriki are weapons of war why can't you just understand your duty and listen to your betters? Jiria said defiantly only to get an amused look. Snap. Jiria screams in pain cradling his broken hand while Naruto stares at him impassively. You never were my better Jiria I could fight and take on both Madara Uchiha and Hashirama Senju if I wanted to I am their legacies and have surpassed them already at a young age and experience can't compete with godlike speed, energy, and power unlike you Tsunade Sama didn't let her skills dwindle like you and the snake Pito did. He mocked while Tsunade had a bashful blush on her face from her godson's praise. Masuko, you're embarrassing me, Tsunade mumbled. It's true Tsunade Sama. I hold famous Kunoichi even if they are genin in high regards, he said with honesty making Shizune and Tsunade gush at him while Serutobi looked at him with amusement. You will bow to the whims of the council Namikaze. A beetle-masked Anbu shouted aiming to knock Naruto out only gasp as Naruto teleported behind him, grabbing his collar and shirt before lifting him in the air and brought him down on his knee. Crack. Snap. A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-A-
Naruto sidesteps a lunge and clothes lined Ataka masked Anbu knocking him out instantly and jumped over a bisecting slash and smashed his foot into the face of another one who cried out in agony as the shards embedded themselves into his skin. Chakra number Mesu. Naruto shouted before dashing toward them and began attacking the nerves on their legs getting cries of pain and agony while Tsunade, Shizun, and the Sandame watched Naruto dance around the Anbu and strike with inhuman agility and grace his hair blowing everywhere. Naruto saw one jump in the air and pushed off the ground transitioning into a corkscrew kick making him cough up blood as he was drilled into the ground before Naruto smashed a fist into his gut knocking him out with four Anbu left standing heavily bruised. Naruto s his arm back charging his spirit energy into his fist as the Anbu charged at him with war cries before punching forward. Shotgun. Naruto shouted as a barrage of bullets blasted into the Anbu launching them into the walls unconscious. Naruto shakes his head smoking before he deactivates his sage mode, and dodged a punch from a fat civilian and placed his palm at his back. Shinra Tensai. He said in a godly voice before the man was knocked through the wall by a shockwave making everyone look at him in fear well the civilians did. Naruto dusted himself off ignoring the moaning Anbu members turning to his godmother. Sumade Sama. Let's talk more when we get to the compound. He offered getting a nod before they vanished in a black flash. Serutobi looked at Jiria and the civilians with an annoyed look on his face. Get thee out of my office, he roared making them scramble out to get away from the angered cage. Old man he may be, but he can scare the shit out some people. Soichi it's time for you to head to the exams. Naruto's eyes opened as he sat in a meditating position after his training session with Benahime and stood up stretching out his joints getting the kinks out of them and went to his room before suiting up in his battle clothing which consisted of black anbu pants and a long sleeve black bodysuit. Black sandals, black fingerless gloves with storage seals on them along with wearing black samurai armor that covered his joints, front, and back it also had the Uzumaki crest on the front and back. He also strapped his personal gumbai to his back and sealed all his favorite weapons on a seal made on his left hand. It's time to show this world the dark maelstrom. He muttered as he headed downstairs getting kisses for good luck while he hugged his mother promising to take her out later on which she squealed it before seeing him out as he vanished using Shunpo appearing on one rooftop after another flash stepping the whole way passing by several teams from different villages even ones from Taki and Yuki and AIM. He soon appeared at the academy entrance making his way inside and heard lots of shouting and saw Team 7 arguing with two genin but, what made him smirk was those two genin were actually Kotetsu and Azumo the eternal Chunin gate guards. He guessed the old man put them up to this and noticed this was the wrong floor, and slipped past the others unnoticed making his way to the real room with his hands in his pocket with a bored look on his face. He soon entered the room where the tests were being taken and felt K.I. being blasted at him making him scowl before retaliating with his own making most of them piss and shit themselves before walking to a corner and leaned on the wall with his eyes closed waiting for the tests to start and cracked an eye open to see Team 7 barge in like they owned the place and saw them spot him and walked over to him with scowls on their faces. Where were you Dobi? Kiba snarled fairly with Naruto giving him a bored look before snorting dismissively making Kiba lunge at his throat only for his to get gripped by Naruto who stood up with Kiba's feet kicking at the air. Listen here Inazaka you will never in your whole life be my equal understand. Kiba's eyes dropped to his feet in submission. Yes Naruto senpei, I'm sorry. He said lowly with Naruto's eye widening a bit before searching his mind and found out his mother told him what he went through and humbled Kiba immensely but still acted irrationally but, managed to remember what happened and apologized that made his respect for Kiba go up slightly and let him down. You're forgiven Kiba san just don't let your pride control you. Kiba nodded before walking back to the other rookies and gave Naruto another nod and continued. Sasuke used that time to attack Naruto with a punch to the face only to cry out in pain from the steel-like grip his hand was in from Naruto's closing palm as he felt the bones in his fingers crack making him scream in pain causing others to wince at how painful that must be impaled with horror as his scream reached a high pitch that was when a cloud of smoke erupted from within the room. Sit the down you little maggots. A man with many scars on his face roared with authority causing many to head to their seats while Naruto just sat between Ino and Hanada who gave him blushes. H hi Naruto kun. Ino waved with Naruto raising an eyebrow and sensed no ill intentions from her and smiled back charmingly causing her face to heat up with a nosebleed making his eyes raise even more and heard Benahime laughing through their mental link making him sigh in irritation. Ino chan there's no need to be shy around me. 
he told her softly while listening to Ibiki explain the rules for the first part of the exam while mentally frowning sensing a foul chakra signature in the smell of snakes and blood? Ino sighed sadly. It's just that I let Sakura-san influence me too much I clearly wanted to go out with you but, I let her drag me toward Sasuke I hope you can forgive me Nakun. Naruto smiled and tilted her head up looking into his eyes and felt her lower parts get wet from the seductive look in them and wondered how can he make her feel like this with just a look. I forgive you Ino-chan just think of your options before going with them, okay? He asked kissing her on the nose getting a squeaky nod from her and felt her hug him tightly which he returned before catching a kanai thrown at her and turned his cold eyes to a hidden chunin sneering at him only for the man to cry out in pain as Naruto stabbed the kanai all the way through his hand cracking part of the table and did this with a satisfied smirk and dusted his hands off. That would have worked on someone else but, not me rookie. Naruto replied mockingly making the man growl and try to pull it out only to hold in a scream at the untold amount of pain his hand was in. Carry on Ibiki. Ibiki nodded before explaining the last of the rules and gained an evil smile. Also one last rule. If one of your teammates fail the rest of the team will fail along with them. Many began to pale in shock and fear while several sent death glares toward their nervous teammates with scary eyes making Naruto laugh his ass off internally before the tests were passed out as he had seen through Ibiki's tactic and was impressed. He made that rule to cause panic, and disorder amongst the ranks clever I can see why you are called the mind sadist. Naruto grinned his fangs making his appearance very scary before Ibiki told them to begin and after he said that Naruto looked over all the questions with a fast, practiced eye and answered all of them with the correct answers along with sending a chakra message to Ibiki as he felt one of the Kusa nins eyeing him hungrily and that caused a shiver of revulsion to roll down his spine and fought the urge to gag. I swear to god this cannot get any worse he thought sourly and closed his eyes to sleep. Ibiki saw this and smirked at seeing his surrogate nephew burn through the written exam so easily. To think he's this powerful and not even at his prime, he thought dryly before finding a couple of teams from Kiri, Iwa, Konoha, and Kumo cheating and eliminating them causing several to protest loudly which Ibiki responded by ordering the Chunin to escort their asses out which amused Naruto who had woken up and heard Ibiki shout the test was over soon everyone laid their pencils down waiting for the final answer. Ibiki's eyes pierced every single weak-willed participant making several sweat in the mental torture while some crumbled and dropped out. For the final question do know that if you fail it you shall be barred from participating in the Chunin exams forever. Many jumped up and started roaring at him fury in their voices while Naruto and some others just sat there calm and composed along with amusement in their eyes. Ibiki growled and blasted them with more KI shutting the wannabe whiners and protesters up. Tough luck asswipes those who took those exams never had me as their proctor. Those who want to leave there's the door. Ibiki pointed a finger at the door lazily with a mocking quality to it causing more teams to fail all that was left were a few teams from the other villages while Konoha had the rookies along with some other teams. Hum very well congratulations you pass since that was a test to see how far you were willing to complete the mission or if you have the guts to help your comrades and teammates live to complete the mission this is what it means to be a Chunin leader. Many nodded at this and smiled while others let out a shaky breath they didn't know they were holding at how close they were to abandoning ship and straightened up when Ibiki was about to speak only for a black bundle to burst through the window and saw a banner posted on the wall and caused everyone to sweat drop, even Naruto and Gara along with Fu, Yugito, Kuritsuchi, and Suzumbaki. The Y and single Anko Mitarashi. Anko grinned devilishly making many scream in fear before passing out. All right, there's no time for questions I am the proctor for the second part of the Chunin exams Anko Mitarashi, she said loudly making Naruto and Ibiki facepalm at her brashness. Anko why were you late? Naruto asked in a calm tone but, Anko froze and chuckled while sweating nervously avoiding his eyes though that only made his eyes narrow. I smell dango and red bean soup on her. Fu pointed out causing Naruto's eye to twitch in irritation while Anko quickly said to meet at training ground 42 before making a hasty retreat through the window while Naruto followed at an ever faster speed and soon a high pitched squeal erupted and many ran outside to see Anko being scolded like a little child by Naruto while rubbing her ass from where Naruto pinched her but, she didn't say she didn't enjoy it. Naruto looked at the location for the next part of the Chunin exams and grinned evilly making those who saw it shit and piss themselves in fear knowing the look of a hunter seeking its prey already but, did not know he knows every route in this forest and has markers placed at every key point where any advantage was. Anko just smiled with a cheery look on her face that just screamed sadist and spoke up. 
This lovely place behind me is the Shi no Mori or you can call it the Forest of Death and will be the stage for the second part of the Chunin exams, each team will get a random scroll which will either a white heaven scroll or a dark blue earth scroll and it will be up to you to obtain a pair of these scrolls one heaven and one earth. She explained with many cringing and others eyeing Naruto with evil intentions which he responded by showing the Sharingan part of his bloodline making several ninja pale as they saw an image of Madara Uchiha standing behind Naruto with that same bloodthirsty grin he had, back during the wars. Sasuke gritted his teeth seeing his so-called rival with a fully matured Sharingan and vowed to get that removed from his skull by any means necessary not knowing Naruto read his mind and had a disappointed frown on his face and shook his head at his mentally unstable half-cousin's thoughts and noticed Anko throwing a kanai at him only for Naruto to spin around grabbing it and appeared behind Anko his nodashi resting on her neck shocking everyone as he did all of that. Within the span of one second. Naruto-kun is so fast. Even Sensei isn't that fast and I can tell he wasn't trying at all. Hanada thought in shock while Shinobi from other villages were shaking in anger, fear, excitement, and downright terror most of this came from Iwa and Kusa due to his heritage as a Namikaze and Uzumaki along with the fact he can use their Jinten and Bakuten Jutsus along with having the blade that uses their Rakuto treasure's power. Naruto checks over all his weapons and straps his Okatana on his hip. His scythe on his back, two hidden kanai in his sleeves, Gumbai sealed in his right hand and two Eskrima sticks twirling in his hands expertly colored black with red hand grips on the bottoms and can connect to make a staff due to them being longer than a Tonto's length allowing Naruto to fight at close and mid-range he can also channel his affinity through them and has Hiraishan seals painted on the hilts along with being able to apply seals if they come in contact with anything. Sakura saw this and made a snide remark. What are those wooden sticks going to do against other shinobi dead last? she said snidely with Naruto and the others giving her a raised eyebrow. Dead last? Haruno if I am not mistaken I was made rookie of the year with Hanada Haim being the kunoichi of the year while you were in third place behind Ino Haim. He drawled boredly with Ino blushing at his praise while Sakura growled angrily at that reminder and plans on showing him what it means to defy her Sasuke-kun. Naruto continued. Also as for these sticks do you really think this is wood? He indicated to the black and red handles with many weapon experts perking up at the sight of the peculiar weapon and asked him what they were made from. I forged them using some chakra titanium and chakra metal alloy that allowed me to make these Eskrima sticks and made sure to fashion them to be longer than a Tonto's length and size along with the fact they are unbreakable and can channel chakra through them and I can re-summon them if I want to and I can also do this. He said before holding the two sticks in a reverse grip and slammed the hilts together and saw to their shock and others' extreme worry was a slim black metal staff that looked longer than the bow staffs of the Serutobi clan. Anko smiled at Naruto who she can't help but blush at since she gained a crush on him even after training him all those years ago and felt her and arousal increase every time she saw his muscled body and beautiful eyes and whiskers that gave him a feral look that instantly painted him as a bad boy in the minds of other girls around the village even Karanai. All right every head to your gates with your scroll. She barked at them while keeping an eye on the suspicious looking KUSA nin who kept glancing at Naruto with a leer under his hat making her narrow her eyes sharply into snake-like slits as she smelled snakes and blood a scent that was stronger than hers but. Shook it off and handed each team their scrolls and when she got to Naruto she whispered something in his ear which made him smile before kissing Anko on the lips causing her eyes to widened in shock and happiness before blushing and murmured a departing comment and left to get something to eat. Naruto stared at Anko's back where the curse mark was and narrowed his eyes as they flashed amber gold dangerously. I swear I will make you pay Orochimaru. He thought before sealing away his heave scroll and walked to gate 10 making him chortle in amusement at the irony at seeing his demon number and waited for the signal to start. All contestants ready. Naruto cracked his neck a couple of times and stretched out his joints and other stiff parts and got a focused look as he started leaking blood and excitement at the thrill of battle. Time to spill blood. He whispered with crazed smirk on his face that would make his ancestor Madara proud. Ready. Naruto stood both feet apart hands to his sides after putting his Eskrima sticks in his arm holsters with legs tensed to dash. Set. The demon blood in him roars in excitement and glee at the battle that's sure to come. Go. 
Instantly all teams sprang into action dashing through their gates some tree hopping and some moving on the ground while staying alert except Naruto who was moving like a ghost across the trees as he gazed around the area using his Sharingan with masterful ease while taking note of the larger than average chakra reserves of the animals around him and saw some snakes nodding at him which he smiled at since after becoming the new snake sage for the contract. He was very friendly with snakes and knew they would choose him over Orochimaru. Naruto suddenly stopped in midair with his flight technique and narrowed his eyes as he looked around and suddenly sniffed the air before pointing a finger at a hidden brush of leaves as a black spark lit up on his finger. Chidori sharp spear. His finger fired a black and red tinted spear of lightning toward its location and was rewarded with a pained scream before it went quiet as an Iwa Nin stepped out and fell dead. It's only been three minutes into the exam and I'm already getting attacked by Iwa Shinobi Mendokus. Naruto muttered rubbing his forehead in irritation before continuing on his way only to see a tiger leaping at him trying to bite his head off only for Naruto burn it to a crispy corpse using a sealless Karyu Endon before heading further into the forest. With Team Ino Shika Cho, Ino looked around on alert for any enemies while using her secretly trained sensor skills for any hidden traps while Shikamaru and Shoji slept while thinking about Naruto and felt her panties wetten from just remembering the way he looked at her it made her shiver in arousal just thinking about it and bit back a scream as a gloved hand covered her mouth and looked back, and saw Naruto telling her to be quiet with his finger and saw they were hiding behind a tree. Naruto-kun what are you doing here? She whispered while inwardly happy to see him again and saw him flick his Sharingan eyes toward the trees a couple of miles away from their tent and when she looked she saw with a grimace two squads of Kiri teams heading toward their location. Naruto-kun we need to get Shika and Choji out of there. She whispered in worry for her teammates and got a nod before Naruto formed two shadow clones and mentally ordered them to get Shika and Choji, and watched them blur in a show of pure speed and appeared later with an awake Choji and Shikamaru. Shikamaru was breathing heavily as he felt the blood from a mile away from the Kiri Nin and had to hand it to Naruto for saving his and his best friend's life. Thanks Naruto I felt their blood even in my sleep and their chakra levels. He shivered just thinking about them as they were way too large for a genin's. Naruto narrowed his eyes at the shiver. How large were they? He asked while keeping an eye on the approaching team and narrowed his eyes when he saw they were higher than a mid Janins and an Anbu's and also detected a henge around them. They're higher than two Anbu captains, he said shakily with Ino and Shoji having worried looks while Naruto was quiet and had a grim face. Those are not Genin. Team 9 turned toward him with shock written on their faces. What do you mean Naruto? Shoji asked with dread building in his stomach. Those Kiri Genin are actually Kiri's shark operatives in disguise they are the most bloodthirsty ninja hailing from water country and are skilled in Sweden jutsus that imitate the shape of a shark he explained much to their paling horror. Ino spoke up with a shaky voice as she clinged to him. And Naruto-kun why are they after us? Naruto seemed to scowl darkly. They want to breed their own mind readers so they'll have an edge over the other countries, he growled lowly with Ino paling even more at the mere thought of being used like that and hugged him even tighter with a scared look while Shikamaru and Shoji had eyes full of rage in their eyes no one will use their best friend like that. Shika, Shoji, Ino. They looked toward him and were handed three tri-prong kanai and instantly Shikamaru saw his plan and smirked deviously. You want us to throw them in the middle of the squad so you can take care of them, even I didn't think of a plan like this Naru. He grinned at Naruto who smirked back while Choji chuckled lowly and Ino had an amazed look at the solid plan before getting into Manji formation and waited for the enemies to appear. They waited to a few seconds more and tensed as the hidden shark squads appeared and started looking around for Team 9 and were destroying the leftover things and were quickly getting frustrated before barking out orders to split up into three groups not seeing Naruto's hidden fanged grin before nodding at Shika who got ready to throw his. Naruto watched the first squad look around with their backs to the center not thinking someone would attack from the center and didn't realize Zabuza and Haku teach Naruto the silent killing style. Shika launched Kanai 1. He whispered to the shadow user who nodded and tossed it toward the middle and watched it pierce the ground with no sound at all thanks to the silent seals placed on it. Naruto nodded and unsheathed his O katana. Guys watch closely I'm going to show you what will be required of you on future missions. He whispered to them and instantly vanished in a black flash in the middle before instantly spinning in a 360 degree motion decapitating the unaware Kiri Anbu in one motion and burned their headless bodies and nodded toward Shika and the others before picking up his kanai and returned to the branch before heading west towards the second squad. Scene break. Damn it where is that damn mind reader? 
A shark operative growled in irritation showing the impatience of a Kiri Nin while the others grunted in agreement not seeing a strange Kanai land beside them and when they did it was too late as Naruto pierced all of them in the heart and snapped the last one's neck before moving on toward unaware of a white snake slithering after him a hungry gleam in its eyes. With Naruto. Last one guys then we can head to the tower. I just know someone is doing this underneath Yugu Haim's nose. He grunted before speeding up and landed on a branch only to bat away a barrage of kanai and shuriken and saw a team of kiri and kumo anbu fighting some were dying while others were still growing strong. Naruto instantly pulled out his eskrima sticks just as three shark nin attacked him in kenjutsu only for him to dodge their attacks with his eyes and sent a barrage of strikes to their skulls crushing them with the titanium sticks just as the other squads spotted him and started launching b to a ranked jutsus at him which he disabled dodged and avoided while his shadow clones kept Ino, Shika, and Shoji safe using the Prada path abilities. Naruto charged his key to his palm. Hokuto go show ha. He fired a wave of red Tuki turning five shark into dust and jumped down cracking the ground on landing and crossed his arms. May I ask why you Bolt Anbu are attacking me? They growled at the bored tone in Naruto's voice. The council wants that no dashi you have in your possession as it has powers we need. One of them stated arrogantly getting a raised eyebrow before they were encased in a large black rectangular coffin before being pierced by black and purple tinted spears getting screams of pain and agony. Hado number 90. Kurohitsugi. Naruto intoned in an emotionless voice before parrying a strike from a shark Anbu and sent a strong kick that caused his heart to burst inside his chest due to adding Yuki to the attack and turned toward the last squad of Anbu and inhaled some air channeling his Katen nature. Katen. Goka Mekyaku. He exhaled firing a massive wall of crimson flames that moved too fast for them to dodge and ended up burning to ash. He released the jutsu and sensed for any more and nodded when he found none and was about to turn back to the others only to growl as a white-skinned snake bit him on the neck which he retaliated by grabbing it and snatched it from his flesh and held it in front of him with a cold look in his eye and instantly recognized whose snake this was no snake of his had white skin. Orochimaru it seems you managed to mark me with your little hickey using your own snake. He instantly turned it to an electrified husk just as a mark appeared on his neck in the form of the kanji for angel and demon which he raised an eyebrow at, only to frown in disgust sensing someone's soul trying to latch onto his and instantly used his godlike control over demonic chakra to kill it while assimilating the curse seal to his body where he gets the power and enhancements before jumping toward the others who were looking at him worriedly. I'm alright guys let's head to the- he stopped when he felt a familiar flare of chakra only it was darker. Sasuke. Naruto dashed toward the location with the others behind him. Scene break. No please stop. Zaku and Kin cried out in pain as Sasuke groped them lecherously on their chests. Yes Zaku's a girl in this FIC, and was about to rip their clothes off regardless of those watching him while Sakura just stood there with a dreamy look seeing what her Sasuke-kun was doing. I suggest you let them go cousin. A familiar cold voice spoke entering the clearing and everyone turned and gasped as Naruto appeared with flaming chain markings appearing on his face and body after he got rid of his armor since he didn't need it anymore and put it in his scroll and now wears a tight muscle shirt with opera length gloves showing his godlike body on display with his curse seal making him look even hotter with that purple aura around him. Zaku and Kin blushed seeing him along with the other female Auto Nin seeing his body and saw Sasuke sneer. I've been waiting for you Ice Dealer. He spat arrogantly with Naruto raising an eyebrow in amusement. Me and I stealer Itoko Chan in case you don't know I am our ancestor's descendant along with the Rakutos meaning I am more Uchiha than you could ever be and also I achieved this through painful training to the point I almost killed myself. Something you wouldn't understand because your soul is so black, your heart is nothing but, a shell of your former self and now I see nothing but an arrogant spoiled brat who is mad because no shinobi are bowing down to him like some overzealous child with a god complex. Naruto sneered coldly making Sasuke narrow his eyes at the insult toward his person while Sakura screeched at him for his disrespect toward Sasuke only for Naruto to walk in front of her staring her down for a few seconds and then. Smack. Sakura held her cheek in pain at the red bruise on her face and stared up at Naruto with tears in her eyes and instantly saw his disappointed eyes that made her feel helpless and meek. I expected more from you Sakura-san even after I offered you my friendship you allowed your family to twist your thinking till you weren't even the Sakura me and Inoheim knew. He said sadly with Sakura dropping her head covering her tears not wanting to see the disgusted look on Ino's face. Oi. Dobi get your ass over here and bow to your superior. 
Naruto turned his head slightly and what Sasuke saw made him sweat in fear as Naruto's curse mark form along with the Sharingan made his cold glare all the more terrifying and saw him walk toward his location with slow, measuring steps and instantly everyone felt fear as Naruto wasn't even generating any killing intent, it was the air around him that reminded them of a cold-blooded killer. Kami-sama, not even that snake fag had a feel to him. Tayuya thought licking her lips in at Naruto with her sister Karen doing the same along with Sasama and Isarabi while the other Otto girls blushed oogling his form. He suddenly stopped at locked eyes with the Otto Nin who gasped seeing the curse mark on his collarbone. He has the heaven and hell curse seal. Junko whispered in awe and slight due to his mark being stronger than her since she was the progenitor of the curse seal and his felt stronger than hers and she felt attracted to that along with his kindness towards animals. Girls this is me Naruto. I know who you are and about your curse seals. His voice spoke in their minds startling them slightly along with Kin and Zaku while Dosu was looking at them suspiciously. Naruto-sama how are you doing this? Kin asked curiously. I got rid of the pedo's soul fragment that was trying to latch on to mine and kept the curse seal and its abilities along with adding some of my own abilities to it like this telepathy with other curse mark users and I can help you get rid of the snake's fragments on you along with curing Junko-chan's problem with her split persona. He explained much to their shock and joy. Zaku suddenly spoke up with a pleading tone and sounded like she was crying internally. Please Naruto-sama I'll do anything for you just save us. I can't stand being that snake's play toy it's going to make me go insane please. Everyone was in shock hearing the pleading, broken tone in Zaku's voice and wondered how bad Orochimaru treated her. Zaku Haim hold on this will sting you guys for a bit and will disorient you a little but, Know this once this happens you will be bound to me are you prepared for this? He asked them once more with the girls having a silent agreement. We understand Naruto-sama we choose you as our master any day. They replied with confidence and loyalty before feeling their vision blur a bit and a burning sensation on their collarbones and saw their curse seals glow before turning a blood red and felt a connection with Naruto and felt warmth radiating from him and it made them blush it was like the feeling was caressing their body. Sasuke got mad at the dobi ignoring him and dashed aiming for his neck with a kanai only for Naruto to lean back and duck under a dragon kick from Sasuke and sent a hard uppercut rocketing the deranged avenger into a tree cracking it making, Sasuke even madder and drawed on more of the curse seal's chakra causing the marks to lengthen. If you think your weak seal will help you against me you're dead wrong. Naruto smirked coldly at the dark rage in his onyx eyes. Sasuke flashed through hand seals. Katen. How Sanka no Jutsu, he blew a barrage of slightly bigger fireballs at Naruto who only smirked wider. Naruto clenched his hand and moved them into an X position causing a wall of earth to block the barrage of flames which didn't deter Sasuke from his assault, he ran toward the wall with mid Jonin speeds and vaulted over the wall of rock only to deflect a barrage of kanai launched from Ino, Choji and Shika who stood beside Naruto. So you weaklings want to challenge me Uchiha? He gloated pompously only for Ino's fist to rocket his head back also knocking a tooth out before jumping back with a grin on her face. How do you like that needle? At least Nakun is extremely endowed, she commented vulgarly making Tuyuya squeal at having a surrogate sister who has the same tendencies as her not seeing the deadpan looks thrown at her. Die you damn whore. Katen. Gokaku no jutsu. Naruto looked back to see a larger than average fireball flying toward them not impressing Naruto in the slightest and unsealed his gum by holding it out in front of him and swung. Fanned wind jutsu. The swing sent a large wind wave. That uprooted the ground and consumed the fireball adding its katan nature to its futon chakra and amplified it into a mid s rank jutsu which frightened Sasuke who used his increasing chakra reserves to chakra jump high over the incoming wall of wind and fire leaving him wide open to a double axe handle from Naruto and Choji sending him plummeting toward the ground only to land on all fours bruising his bones while slightly cracking the ground and growled at them hatefully. Sasuke then sees Sakura and appears behind her placing a kanai on her neck with a threatening glare towards them. S Sasuke Nand, Sakura whispered as she felt her heart shatter. You are only good to me as breeding stock and a shield feel grateful you stupid whore. He said in an uncaring driving the spike all the way and forever breaking her heart into many pieces and soon her eyes turned a blank emerald scaring the others except Naruto who was trying to clam himself down. Sakura turned her head toward Naruto with a broken look and asked something that broke his emotionless facade. Naruto-kun please kill me. 
her plea whispered through the entire clearing shocking the Konoha teams that were watching the whole team along with Yugito, Kuritsuchi's, and Chojira's teams at how broken she sounded and helpless. Sakura what are you saying? Shikamaru said shakily not believing this is the same Sakura they knew while Ino was trying not to cry at the sight of her best friend. Sakura smiled sadly. I can't go on anymore I don't deserve the privilege of being a shinobi nor the privilege to live, even my own family except Ka-san would care if I died. She chuckled hollowly only to cry out in pain from Sasuke slapping her. Be quiet woman, hostages do not speak out of line. He said harshly only to get cold, hollow scornful laughter from Sakura that made even Naruto grimace. Why would you care Uchiha Yaro? You hated Naruto-kun just for being better than you when he earned his spot in the academy while you whined and pleaded to the council about having extra private trainers and didn't even care about me trying to my hardest to make you feel better. She whispered hatefully to him making his eyes darken in rage at how she is speaking to him and heard something that made him snap. You Sasuke Uchiha are nothing but a ing demon in human skin. She snarled releasing all the pent-up rage, sorrow, sadness, and pain in her soul with Naruto's eyes widening seeing the kanai heading for her neck and instantly vanished in a black flash appearing in front of Sakura blocking the kanai only for it to pierce his hand while Sakura and Ino gasped in horror seeing what he did. Sakura stared at Naruto with confusion and tears dripping down her cheek. Naruto-kun, Naze. Why? She asked choking on her own cries while Naruto just smiled down at her with a warm smile unlike the cold emotionless one he always had during the academy and felt her shattered heart go warm and felt each piece coming back together. What kind of person would I be if I couldn't give my former crush a second chance? He asked softly causing Sakura to cry in happiness with her eyes slowly gaining their bright look back and placed her hand on his palm incased in a green aura and began healing the wound making Sasuke growl and try to stab her in the back only for a gloved hand to grab his neck causing the marks to vanish and instantly he felt weak while Naruto's curse seal markings still adorned his body. Naruto leaned down into Sakura's face getting a slight blush from the pinkette and gasped as he kissed her on the lips lightly causing the kanji for Haruno to appear on her arm in pink. You're free now Sakuheim. He whispered lovingly into her ear making Sakura pass out with a smile only for him to catch her and tossed her to Shika. Choji and Ino who made sure she was alright before Naruto turned toward Sasuke with a cold, vengeful look before placing his index finger on his forehead. You are no longer Uchiha in my eyes Sasuke Teme nor are you worthy of possessing our bloodline. Fuenjutsu. Bloodline Locker. He yelled instantly Sasuke screamed in pain as his eyes reverted back to their onyx ones not to unlock unless Naruto allows it and dropped him to the ground and kicked him in the face knocking him out instantly and grabbed his collar and began dragging him. Namikaze curse sealers to me. He ordered and instantly to Yuya and the others appeared bowing in front of him. Hi, Naruto-sama. Girls follow me and the others to the tower, Junko, Sasama, Kimimera make sure Sakuraheim is safe. He asked softly getting nods before Kiba came out from the hollow tree with a limp and saw Naruto. Naruto what happened? He grunted at the pain in his ribs while Naruto told Kiba of the events that unfolded and by the end Kiba looked ready to slick e open Sasuke's throat only Naruto's words stopped him and was quickly patched up by the godly person before him and got his ribs healed quickly. Thanks Naruto senpai. He muttered out a thanks before standing up and headed toward the tower with Naruto and the other teams. One hour later. Naruto and the others entered the tower and saw a large battle arena with a huge stone ram sign and looked around for the proctors. I think we need to open the scrolls. Kuritsuchi pointed out getting nods before Naruto pulled out his set and opened them only to toss them away seeing the kanji for human on them and instantly puffs of smoke erupted and soon showed the forms of Jiraiya, Kashina, Kakashi, Isami, Kurinai, Maida Gai, Makoto, and Kayubi wearing Junin attire except Jiraiya. Hey Kushi-chan. Naruto smirked seeing Kashina blush shyly and suddenly she saw Sasuke in Naruto's hand by his shirt collar. Naruto-kun what happened to him? Everyone turned toward Sasuke who was just waking up only to cry out in pain from Naruto grinding his foot into the back of his head with a bored look with the floor muffling his cries for help as Naruto turned his now cold glare onto him. Be quiet you little shit. He roared at Sasuke with his curse seal pulsing on display which Kashina gasped at along with the others. You got marked by Orochimaru. Kashina screeched in fury planning on skinning that man alive only to hear a snort from Naruto. The pedo got a lucky shot oh and as for his curse seal I got rid of the soul fragment leaving its power and abilities with me with the sake being none the wiser.
he replied slyly making Kashina and Kayubi bust out laughing while Jiraiya and Kakashi had frowns before Naruto turned his glare on them and snatched Sasuke up by his hair with his feet dangling off the ground. Hitaki you better answer me right now. Because I thought comrades were supposed to look after each other so tell me why this little Ur tried to use Sakuraheim as a ing shield against me. His voice snarled ferally as he gripped Sasuke's neck harshly getting a strangled gasp. Naruto pointed toward a crying Sakura with fury evident in his voice. Do you have any idea how mentally fragile she is now? He spat at Sasuke who manged a weak insult. She's nothing to me. He spat in Naruto's face only to get backhanded across turning his face red from the hit along with fracturing his jaw and knocking a few teeth loose ignoring Jiraiya's threats and Kakashi's warnings as he continued to beat Sasuke brutally getting horrified looks from the Junin and Chunin who walked in with the Hokage and the council. Naruto Uzumaki what are you doing? Mebuki thundered with Naruto holding Sasuke by his collar with a disdainful look. Mebuki-sama this little bastard used your Masumi as a ing shield just to save his own life. He said coldly with Mabuki's eyes widening in horror and worry before dashing to Sakura who hugged her tightly with sobs as she was cradled by her mother whispering soft words to her. How bad was it? Mebuki asked fearing for her daughter's sanity and felt dread when she saw his grim face. She wanted me to kill her to ease her pain, I couldn't do that to her even if I was cold to Sakuheim when I was younger I still felt love for her even when she tried putting me down. He smiled sadly while Sakura smiled tearfully at him. Naruto-kun, go menace. She whispered and fell unconscious again the stress too much for her body to handle startling Mebuki who checked her daughter's pulse and saw she was still breathing getting a sigh of relief. Mebuki-sama take her to Uncle Inoichi there's no doubt she'll need counseling to heal her heart and mind. He said softly getting a nod for Mebuki who walked toward him and Sasuke and when she looked at Sasuke she slapped him hard making him snarl at her. She then hugged Naruto tightly. Thank you Naruto-san. I wish I wasn't so stupid like those others, she whispered sorrowfully. Naruto smiled and hugged her back. You're forgiven Mebuki-chan go make sure Sakura is okay. He motioned her to Sakura who was sleeping peacefully and saw them walk away. Naruto-kun is it true Orochimaru marked you? Anko said worriedly and gasped when he pulled his collar down and was about to check him over only to get a smile from her crush. Anko Haim I got rid of his soul fragment now I have the seal's power. He smirked much to their shock while others had a green face. You mean his soul is put into those things? Anko said shakily getting a nod from Tayuya and the others before she suddenly ran to a bathroom and began vomiting due to her feeling so violated and came back with a pale look on her face. What type of seal is it? Naruto showed them the kanji for heaven and hell which changed to angel and demon which got raised eyebrows at that. It's his strongest seal that's supposed to ensure complete loyalty to the creator he didn't take into account my soul cannot be controlled and basically I absorbed the fragments knowledge along with gaining complete control over the seal meaning I can use it without any backlash. He said smugly much to the council's shock and some's anger at not getting a chance to control him. Why you don't deserve the Sharingan Ga? Sasuke cried out in more pain as Naruto threw him to the ground and pressed his foot down on his throat making him flail around in pain trying to breath in air. Uncle Fugaku would be disappointed in you Itoko. He drawled in monotone ignoring the gasps from the council and saw some corrupt Anbu trying to attack him only for black and red lightning to erupt from his palm and instantly strike the incoming shinobi sending them to the floor in pain and agony as it felt like their souls were being stabbed repeatedly. I will not allow such disobedience in my ancestor's village. He spoke coldly increasing the voltage little by little. Naruto-kun that's enough. Isami yelled with Naruto stopping only having a raised eyebrow while the Anbu were breathing heavily due to how much strain they were under to stop themselves from screaming bloody murder. I'm amazed you four survived my sinful lightning technique most would have become mentally broken from exposure to it. He said slightly amazed no small feat for someone like Anbu. Sinful lightning why is it called that? Makoto asked leaning on Naruto while he just chuckled darkly. The technique takes every sin you've committed and forces you to feel it with 2x times the effects depending on the sin you've committed you will feel either pleasure or pain and I can increase the voltage to turn you into a mindless for my enjoyment if you cross the line with me, Kukakuku. Many women who had a masochist streak in them blushed bright red especially Anko and Matabi along with a shiver of anticipation hoping he'll use it on them. Naruto let Sasuke go now. Kakashi growled with Naruto giving him a dark superior smirk that made Kayubi and Manda horny. 
I'll do it if you get on your knees along with the rest of these assholes and beg for my forgiveness. Naruto said mockingly getting ooing motions from the other Jonin at the offer while Jiraiya and some others sputtered in indignation. That's it kid that power is getting to your head, it is getting sealed away now. Jiraiya growled and charged at Naruto whose hand twitched and instantly the former Otto Kunoichi appeared next to Jiraiya Kanai placed at vital points on his body making everyone freeze except Naruto who walked toward him dragging Sasuke roughly. These are my bodyguards and Himes, Namikaze curse sealers I have control over their seals meaning I can give them a fraction of my chakra and other abilities to fight with so do not test me Jiraiya-san because you are no family in my eyes you are nothing but. Trash the lowest of the low along with Hitaki for betraying my two sans wish get out of my sight before I decide to kill you. He tossed the emo into Jiraiya knocking him along with Kakashi and Sasuke into a wall getting groans of pain. Naruto turned towards a full looking Hanada and motioned her to come with him which she obliged and skipped toward his room happily while Naruto smirked. Come get me in two days guys I have some pent up stress to release. He grinned before heading to his room causing everyone to gain nosebleeds including Mebuki who came back. Naruto smirked as Hinata fell asleep under the covers and was surprised to see she had enough stamina to last but, wasn't complaining in the slightest. He then grinned as he went inside his mindscape with his other mates training his ninja skills, Senjutsu, Kido, Kenjutsu, Ryatsu techniques, Taijutsu, along with his wizard and hollow powers and his curse seal of heaven and hell which had levels equal to his number of tails. LV1 Seal. Markings cover his body increasing his physical strength, speed, reaction time, stamina, and thought process. LV2 Seal. Skin turns slightly pale along with sprouting a black demon wing and a white angel wing. Chakra becomes even more denser and darker. Abilities of LV1 mode increased by a factor of 2. LV3 Seal. Same appearance as his LV2 form except it has the abilities of the LV1 and LV2 modes along with having increased chakra control, gains ability to combine chakra and yuki together for more devastating effects along with super enhanced senses. LV4 Seal. Grows 10 chakra wings that can be shaped into any weapon and are on the same level as the chakra of the 9 tails, skin density grows to steel like levels. LV5 Seal. 5 times the enhancements in LV2 mode along with having control over space. LV6 Seal. Lightning affinity grows beyond godlike control allowing Naruto to fire any jutsu of any rank without any seals, speed increases to the speed of light, able to manipulate the souls of those slain by the wielder. LV7 Seal. Loses wings and becomes encased in a black and red armor that has an appearance of a fox human, eyes turn crimson, teeth lengthen into fangs, Fingernails grow claws and chakra is increased even further with just being near the user's chakra those weak willed will die from the pressure. LV8 Seal. Naruto gains the ability to use all 8 gates with ninjutsu and will be further immune to the after effects, can launch waves of pressurized air from taijutsu attacks along with being able to heal any wound. LV9 Seal. Gains a black chakra mode that makes Naruto look like an altered sage of 6 paths and can reduce any jutsu to nothing. LV10 Seal. Spectral form of user's demon form manifests into a being bigger than a biju and can launch any ninjutsu of any kind, can fire bijudama's seros, can summon spirits of other biju, wields a sword that launches slicing winds that obliterate anything it contacts with, can grow chakra arms to form multiple hand signs, chakra is increased to ungodly levels so much even a cage would be hard pressed to match along with a biju and can form any weapon to fight with. And will only be used either during a war or a big fight. His mates were floored when he described his cursed seal forms he mastered so easily and waited for the preliminaries to approach while his new girls from Otto settled in at the estate he made sure even Orochimaru or Akauski could get through without dying while training them to be stronger than an Anbu squad using his new time chamber and managed to rid Junko of her insane persona. He also promised to take Sakura on as his apprentice after becoming a Jonin after the exams which made Mebuki and Sakura squeal before kissing him with reckless abandon which made him blush a bit in them included before getting to know them better and were very close after a couple more days and was like a role model to any future shinobi. Naruto stands with the other contestants and his senseis wearing black anbu pants. Steel-toed boots a black bodysuit that strained against his muscles while he had two tattoos on his forearms showing the Rinnegan and the other his A and no Mangekyo proudly while he had his Chikudo tucked into his belt. Eskrima sticks on his arm arm holsters, 
O Katana strapped to his hip, and Gumbai on his back and his new titanium chakra metal Hiraishan Kanai hidden in seals on his hands while his hair looked more wilder along with him changing it crimson blood red permanently along with his eyes and whiskers giving him a very feral demonic look that had every woman and female oogling and drooling at him which made him smirk making him even hotter. Ahem now I will explain the purpose of this exam. Serutobi coughed with his students beside him while Naruto had his beside him wearing Konoha Chunin attire not afraid of Orochimaru anymore as they were cage level thanks to his training in the time chamber and cage Bushin training and listened as he explained the purpose of the Chunin exams unfortunately for Naruto he to stand next to Kakashi. And his little toy Sasuke while Sakura held on to his arm from the other side not wanting to be near her team anymore except Kiba. Why are you standing near me Hitaki? He said coldly not giving them a glance ignoring them completely which irked the two Sharingan users, yes Naruto unsealed his Sharingan while planting a hidden one that will destroy his eyes if he tried to gain the Mangekyo either that or Naruto will take his eyes himself from the disgrace to preserve Fugaku's memory. Just wondering what you are going to do about Sasuke's curse seal. He shrugged with Naruto RPE lying back loudly after Serutobi finished his speech. Here's my answer for you Hitaki Yaro. Sasuke can go ahead and get ing butt raped by Orochimaru's pasty needle ass for all I care and I wouldn't even bat a ing eyelash. He had to laugh his ass off with Sakura at the gags sounding around the room while Kakashi had a twitch. Kiba noticed something on Sasuke's face. Dude are you blushing? He trailed off as his eyes widened and stepped away from the so-called gay Uchiha hiding behind Kurenai and made a guy while many males were stepping far away with their hands on their asses including Naruto and Shino and Asuma. Hokage-sama who will be going first? Hayate asked from the center of the arena with Naruto raising his hand eagerly. I will Hayate Sifu. Many looked at him with shock at him going first. Anyone want to fight more than once? Hayate asked innocently not seeing Yugo's amused look. Yay I'm all for it. Naruto replied again with a gleeful tone causing many to drop out especially Kabuto who was scared shitless. Okay Naruto Uzumaki Senju Uchiha Namikaze will be fighting first and more than once now let's see the first matchup. He announced as everyone turned toward the board and what they saw made some pale while others grinned. Naruto Uzumaki Senju Uchiha Namikaze vs Sasuke Uchiha. Everyone except Kakashi laughed their asses off at Sasuke's name while said person was glaring daggers at an innocent looking Kashina while Makoto was red in the face trying to not laugh her ass off while Anko had no such restraint and was cackling like a hyper hyena. Naruto kun kick his ass for me and I'll give you a reward. Sakura asked sweetly giving a kiss on the lips as an incentive making Naruto grin devilishly. Hi, Sakura sama. He kneeled and instantly appeared in the arena with his arms crossed tapping his foot. Come and get your ass whipping Itoko, he proclaimed out loud in a slow agonizing way making Sasuke growl before stomping down with his two Tomo Sharingan active while Naruto's were deactivated. Ready, Hajime. Sasuke instantly threw a barrage of kanai at Naruto not seeing his pointed finger before he vanished in a flock of ravens. Sasuke turned only to freeze seeing nothing but darkness only for a sword to slash his throat spilling blood making him scream in pain before vision returned to him and saw naruto laughing madly at him while he sat there on his ass and it clicked making him growl angrily genjutsu he snarled before flashing through hand seals and fired a stream of flames katan karyu enden naruto smirked when he saw a red flame dragon heading toward him at impressive speeds but not in his eyes and instantly punched it causing the flames to disperse getting looks of shock from everyone even Kakashi who dropped his book. After gaining the curse seal and adding my own abilities to it, I added some sort of artificial keke jenke to it called chakra cancel, imagine the magic cancel from Nagima except with chakra, and it allows me to cancel out any chakra based technique along with me being able to destroy the chakra network completely though it's only reserved for those I really hate. He grinned darkly before five clones appeared beside him flashing through hand seals. Kaden. Karyu Enden no Jutsu. Clone 1 fired a massive dragon the size of a building from its mouth. Sweden. Swiryuden no Jutsu. Clone 2 called out as a massive dragon of violet water appeared from midair glaring down at Sasuke with red eyes. Doden. Doryuden no Jutsu. Clone 3 stomped the ground as a giant earth dragon appeared grinning at its target. Futon. For Yudan no Jutsu. Clone 4 slapped his hands together causing a transparent green dragon of wind to swirl around him. Raiden. Rariudan no Jutsu. 
Clone 5 roared forming a dragon of black lightning above him glaring with glowing blue eyes. Everyone's jaw dropped except a smirking Naruto and smirking clones and everyone had one thought in their mind. He is so boned. Sasuke screamed girlishly as he used his chakra to enhance his speed to run away from the incoming dragon jutsus as they made large explosions knocking him around each time and he thought he managed to escape as the lightning dragon dissipated only for a kick to the back to knock him into the statue. Never drop your guard Itoko I thought our fights had taught you that. He drawled in Isami's scolding tone which she blushed at getting jealous glares from the other girls. Naruto pulled out his Eskrima sticks twirling them in a flashy motion before joining the hilts together making his staff which amazed them at it being longer than the Serutobi clan's bow staffs. If you're a real Uchiha fight like one Itoko. He taunted his coughing cousin who snarled and launched himself at Naruto slashing with a pair of kanai only for his assault to be blocked and countered by the extremely complex swings from his staff as each hit felt like getting hit by a boulder. Naruto slammed his bow staff into Sasuke's stomach making him cough up blood and hit him five times in one second on his limbs making the pain even worse and tried a feeble weak slash only to get sweeped off his feet and choke slammed into the ground knocking him out instantly right after Hayate declared him the winner and walked up to Sakura. Naruto placed his hands around her waist with smile as his and her forehead touched showing their newly repaired relationship. Now you were saying Blossom Sama. He said sultrily only getting a saucy smile before she gave him a big wet kiss which turned into a makeout session and soon Sakura was panting with a blush on her face. Get away from my student Naruto. Kakashi growled only getting a raised eyebrow. Are you and the others mad because my is much bigger than yours? He asked in a mocking tone while his girls heard this and gained a mischievous look. Nay. Naruto-sama why don't you show them? Manda hissed out with a snake-like smile while Naruto smirked and positioned himself in front of everyone. I know many are gonna think I am too blunt but, this needs to be done, and suddenly unzipped his pants and whipped it out causing everyone to go sliant. Oh Kami-sama. Sume whispered in and downright awe as his now 17 in soldier stood proud making many women blush and drool literally permeating the room while Sakura and Mebuki just stared with an odd gaze. Now that the limp is done comparing sizes, snicker. I am heading to my room for some R&R &R duches, he flashed a peace sign as he walked to his room as a blushing Sakura and Kin ran after him. Matt Naruto Sama wait for us. The whole room laughed at Kakashi and Jiraiya who felt their egos bruised and were now in a sour mood. Damn it Naruto. They grouched as they were barraged with embarrassing comments on their sizes, even a disguised Orochimaru was subjected to it and he was restraining himself from killing everyone one of them. Naruto just smiled. I love it when I win. He cackled laughing his ass off. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.